Time now for the MLB Game of the Week pregame show presented by Google Pixel. That's right, Cleveland Rocks. We got the Indians coming up, and they're on a roll right now. Winners of three straight games getting set for the third of a three-game set at Progressive Field as they'll be hosting the Minnesota Twins, one of our favorites here at MLB Network, one of the game's great slugger, someone that everyone in Cleveland loves, Jim Tomey, and Logan Allen getting set right now. So far, struggling a little bit this season, one and three with a 6.28 ERA, but hoping to turn things around. He did get off to a nice start. He has struggled over the last couple of games. And with a nod to Field of Dreams, I can't think we're coming out of the corn stalks. It's Adnan Burke and our great closer. That's right. Dan Plesak is ready to rock. I felt like I was coming out of the bullpen. I was waiting for your late <laughs> Bring that, that left arm in. I was ready to come in. Well, Put me in, we're, coach. Just imagine we were out here just playing shack and fly balls, right? Hanging out here, left center. Um, My heart be started beating right there. I thought all of a sudden I was late for a game. Get ready to start making some throws. They always say every ball player has nightmares of waking up and they can't find their glove or can't find their cleats. I, I have had the reoccurring nightmare of I in spring training, I get to a ballpark, I can't get in, the gates are locked, oh, and nobody God. will let me in. <laughs> I'm supposed to pitch the seventh inning. Come on, Skip! Can't, I can't get into the ballpark. Oh, it's definitely a terrifying thought. Well, listen, we've got lots of great news because we're looking forward to a great game. The Indies and the Twins, Minnesota struggled, Dan, but I think they'll turn it around. Lots of great young stars they have on that team, and Cleveland, as I mentioned, on a three-game roll. Let's Let's look back in case you missed it. The highlights from last night. Now two down for Jose Ramirez. And it's swung out and hammered to deep right. Way out of here. Number six for Jose Ramirez. And the Indians down two to one in the first. Fran Mil Reyes has been getting locked in over the last eight games, hitting 355. And it's swung out and hit high. Hit deep to left. Way, way out of here. Oh, my. Three quarters of the way up the bleachers. We are tied at two. Two down. Nobody on game tied at three for Fran Mil Reyes. Reyes swings and hits it. Deep to left. Forget about it. Another rocket. And Reyes has his second home run tonight. Seven on the year. But Savali now all five starts. His pitch count has surpassed 90. As he faces Buxton with a two-run lead, 5-3 in the eighth inning. Base is empty. Buxton swings and launches high and deep to left field. Back it goes, deep it goes, and gone. Number seven for Buxton makes this a one-run game. It's 5-4 Cleveland in the eighth. Here's Jake Cave, Twins' last hope. Now the set, now the 0-2 pitch. Swing and a miss. Wiped him out with a high heat. Ball game. James Karinczak as dominant as ever. Karinczak is definitely fun to watch. You did see Buxton went deep. We're going to talk to Byron Buxton momentarily here on the show. But have a little tail of the tape. That's right. In this corner, the main event. You got Nelson Cruz versus Fred Mill Reyes. Both these guys are staggeringly big human beings. 265 for Reyes, 230 for Nelly Cruz. Both guys with seven home runs. Nearly identical slugging percentages and the hard hit percentage, both in the top 5% of Major League Baseball. Both these guys can mash right now, Dan. What are you seeing from both these guys? Well, right now they're both getting hot too. Nelson Cruz has hit his entire career. The Indians have had a difficult time scoring runs, but that's changed in the last week to 10 days. Why? Fran Mill is starting to catch fire. Power to all fields. He's a big, strong dude. And he's the kind of guy like that is embracing this full-time DH. And it's not an easy thing to do. What he's been really capable of doing, he gets a hanging breaking ball from Kenta Maeda last night and hits this about 460 feet. Then he gets a fastball in and he bombs this one to left center field. He's an equal opportunity basher to Adnan. He'll hit the ball to all fields, and that's why when he's swinging well, he'll hit the ball all over the place. Nelson Cruz, when you have the name, yes, he's the king of the DHs. The greatest nickname right now in baseball, the boomstick, and the boom keeps booming. He's as good now as he was 10 or 12 years ago. He's getting better with age. He, like Franmil, power to all fields. 
more polished, maybe a more accomplished hitter than Fran Mill right now. The best DH in the game, you're looking at him right there, Nelly Cruz. Yeah, king of the DH is for good reason. Fran Mill hopefully can get to that ratio, but the way Cruz has been so good for so long, you're right, those Cruz missiles are certainly fun to watch. With regards to the guys on the mound, how about Jay Happ? He's coming off one of the best outings of his 15-year career. Dan, he came on within five outs of a no-hitter on Friday. What are you seeing from Happ? He's been much better, and he needs to be. The twin starting pitching has really been down this season. Jay Happ has bounced around but he's he's a unique guy mm -hmm. he throws a lot of fastballs and and when he's on I call him kind of a backwards kind of a lefty he'll throw the ball into righties you're going to see basically a two pitch mix he's primarily a fastball slider guy mm -hmm. but when he's moving his fastball to both sides of the plate the key for him is to be down in a way to lefties and get this slider over it's not a great slider it's a good slider if he's commanding the fastball it makes his slider better his last start he finally put it all together this guy's pitched really good baseball for the Yankees he's pitched good baseball for the Toronto Blue Jays mm -hmm. and I know that the twins are hoping he can recapture some of that magic this pitching staff that was so good last year hasn't been as good last year. They need somebody other than Barrios to get going. Maeda's a struggle up to this point. Yeah. They need Jay Happ to pick it up. And I worry about the age of Jay Happ. The guy's 38 years of age, but you're right. So far, he he's keeps himself in great shape. Good he point. looks the same body wise now as he did five years ago. That's good point. Age ain't nothing but a number. Our poll question today, as we're going to have the Indians and the Twins coming up momentarily from aggressive field. This is the question. Who's going to win today? Real simple. Twins or Indians? And again, the male matchup is Happ versus Logan Allen. Happ has been terrific so far. Allen, as I mentioned, got off to a nice start. Last couple of starts hasn't been nearly as strong. So Twins and Indians are coming up, and that is our poll question. When we come back here in the MLB Game of the Week, pregame show presented by Google Pixel, we've got lots more coming up. As they're counting down this game at the top of the hour, there is a look once again at Allen trying to bounce back here for this Cleveland Indians team that has been hot. They've won three straight games. You'll hear from Byron Buxton and Zach Campbell on the way. Don't go anywhere. Twins and Indians coming up. Arcana leads off. Check swing, ground ball. Gets by Maeda. It's rolling out to second base. Arise, bare hands, and throws him out. Arise skillfully making that play. As Donaldson hammers one to left field and deep. Back it goes, deep it goes, and gone. Donaldson first pitch ready. A home run to left, his first of the season, and the Twins take a 1 0 lead. Swinging a drive, left field and deep. Back it goes, deep it goes, and gone. Twins take the lead on a 3 2 hanger. To Nelson Cruz, a two-run shot. 4-3 Twins in the third. And now a blast to left center field. Buxton with a diving catch in center. Oh, what a catch by Byron Buxton. Preserving the lead. A tremendous catch by Buxton to keep the Twins off 10-9. Wallop to left field. And gone, a home run. Ostadio's first of the year, and the Twins take the first lead. Throw me a high fastball, and I'm swinging anyway. And tried to go up the stairs, and he just clubbed it. You're watching the MLB Game of the Week pregame show presented by Google Pixel. I remember the name Byron Buxton because I got to call the Futures game for ESPN with Aaron Boone and Rick Sutcliffe at the time. And everyone said, wait to see this Byron Buxton kid. He can fly. He's got speed. There's a reason why he's got so much hype around him. Byron, we'll get into your speed and your defense in just a second. But how about the power? Seventh home run last season. Where is that stemming from? Um, no, I think it's just a little bit of the experience I got from previous years and uh, just trusting my ability to go up there and trust my process you know uh, there's times where things don't go your way and you tend to to switch up what you're trying to go up there and do and you know for me I'm just going up there sticking to my approach and my plan and uh, just being aggressive and, and swinging at swinging at good pitches. You know, that's the biggest key for me right now. You know, Byron, there are a lot of slogans in baseball. A pitcher's best friend is a double play ball. I'm going to disagree. Pitcher's best friend is a guy like you playing center field. I have to ask you, when you get to a ballpark, do you survey center field and say, ah, this is a place I might be able to rob a home run? 
Um, yeah, I do. You know, every every new, new well, not new, but new road trip we go on, you know, I kind of go out, take that first day to get acquainted to the field, uh, go out a little bit early, see how the ball bounces off the wall, see how the ball, if it snakes in the outfield or not, uh, how true it is. So the, the little things is what I really focus on on the first day to, you know, learn or figure out if I need to try to break or cut off this ball a little bit better because some fields the grass move a little bit quicker than others so it's hard to cut those balls off and you want to know that to, to be able to give you the best chance to keep them from getting that 90 feet. What, which is the much tougher play for you the ball coming in on or the ball going over your head? Um, for me it's probably more so the ball I'm coming in on. Um, I find myself which I'm working on a little bit more. Uh, because I'm running pretty good to try to get there. I'm, I'm My head's bouncing a little bit more, so the ball moves for me a little bit more coming in. But on the way back, it's uh, a little bit more control just because of, uh, you know, you got a little bit more time to, to read the ball and, and look around to, to see your surroundings. And the key, not only reading the ball, but also your speed. Last night, listen, beating an infield hit 31 feet per second, I believe, is the sprint speed. I probably butchered that. But bottom line is this, you are fast. And what I always wonder is this, yeah, you're born with speed, but you obviously increase that. There's ways that you can do that. How do you maximize in getting the best out of your speed? Um, you know, I, in the offseason, I go home and take about, about a month, month and a half and do speed, speed training, no weights, uh, just kind of work on my form and, and technique to try to help me get that extra 90 feet or whatever. Um, you know, obviously, I haven't stolen many bases, but that's part of my game. And it's something that, uh, you know, I, uh, I want to increase to get better at. So uh, I go back home with uh, my high school track coach a little bit, and we just go through techniques and drills. And yeah, you know, it's just, kind of works out for me every year. Uh, I seem to get a little bit faster and faster. You know, Byron, it's a long season. You guys have gotten off to a little bit of a slow start. Do you feel comfortable at the end when we get into September and October that the Minnesota Twins will be where they've been near the top of that division? 100%. Um, you know, obviously this baseball, uh, things haven't went the way we wanted it to, but we're coming out here, we're competing, and things are going to change. And once it changes, you know, this team is electric. We can go on a win streak quick as possible, and it could be 15, 20 games. So it's just one of those where we just got to keep coming out here, being competitive and doing our thing, being ourselves and, and, and being cocky. So, you know, we just got to get back to, to bend up. I like the cockiness. That's a big part of it. You're right. You have the right attitude out there. Leading off today, Byron, you hit 30 yesterday. Do you have a preference where you bat in the order? Uh, not really. Uh, you know, with the way that we go, uh, they kind of told us it doesn't matter where you're hitting the lineup. Just go out there and be yourself, be you. And that's something that, you know, I, I took in the last couple of years to, you know, they just want you to go out there and be yourself. Do what Byron Bucks know how to do or Nelly Cruz or whoever the situation may be. They don't want you to go out there and do too much. And the way our lineup is set up is one through nine. So one guy just keeps the keeps the line moving. Is Minnesota nice a myth or a reality? Uh, could be a little bit of both. I'm finding it more of a reality, I guess. Um, I hear that quite a bit, actually. I could go just riding to pick up my stuff from Target, and somebody might notice me. They'd be like, hey, hey, Mr. Buxton, you Minnesota nice today, you know? And I'm like, yeah, it's Minnesota nice today. You know, and it's a brutal day outside. <laughs> <laughs> Brutal day, just pouring rain. <laughs> well, it's always a positive to uh, at least have a positive attitude no matter what the weather is like. Whether it's Byron Saxon it in WWE or Byron Bucks in MLB, you guys are getting it done. Byron, thanks so much for the time. Keep crushing it with the Twins. Yes, sir. Thank you. MLB Game of the Week pregame show presented by Google Pixel. Time to shine the light on our creator's spotlight. That would be Zach Hampel. That's right. He has the MLB Game of the Week live on YouTube. We do. And so that's what we're spotlighting Zach because he has lots of adventures and lots of stadiums. He explores the nooks and crannies and eats crazy food. He interacts with players and talks with the game and has, how about this, over 11,000 baseballs caught. As for the favorite team of Zach Hampel, whoever is at the plate and likely to send a home run in my direction. 
And joining us now is indeed Zach Hample. The, the controversial, is he a friend or a foe? We'll get into all that in a second. But Zach, first and foremost, thank you for the time. This journey that you've been on, this, this obsessive, crazy fan journey, just please tell me, how did this all begin? How did you become Zach Hample, a noted fan of 11,000 baseballs? Well, it's great to be with you guys. I am definitely a friend, not a foe. Let's get the record <laughs> straight here. Uh, this all started for me when I was a little kid watching baseball on TV and just seeing fans getting baseballs and celebrating like crazy. And that left some kind of impression on me as it does a lot of kids, but for whatever reason, I was hooked. It took me years to get my first baseball, a toss up at Shea Stadium when I was 12. And I just never looked back after that. I just always wanted to be at the ballpark, getting as many baseballs as possible. Zach, recently in Dunedin, that was, I believe, your 40th ballpark, big league ballpark you're in. Tell me about your Dunedin experience. It was actually number 60 for me. Oh! Um, <laughs> Yes, I've been to twice as many stadiums now as there are teams because whenever MLB plays at an alternate venue, I try to go there. You know, if the wins and losses count for the teams and the stats count for the players, why can't I log it as a stadium? So, you know, I was in Sydney for the opening series in 2014, Tokyo Dome, I mean, Puerto Rico, Mexico, Monterey, and so Dunedin, obviously. Um, and I had a wild time there. I caught a lot of baseballs outside the stadium one day, seven in one game. Just one of the many adventures this season already. And the natural follow-up, Zach, what's your favorite park? And I'm assuming it's going to be the park you've caught the most balls at. Which one is that? Currently, I'd have to go with Camden Yards. But I think all time, I'd go with Tiger Stadium that I've been to. And Dan, by the way, you've thrown me several baseballs over the years, including one in the upper deck in right field at Tiger Stadium in 1998. So thank you very much for that. Really? <laughs> My next question was going to be this. You've, got, you've gotten some big A-Rods, 3,000 hit. So on the day of a game when you're sitting there and, and you want to get a ball from a guy like A-Rod, are you nervous? Do you have to be in the right place at the right time? What do you do? Do you scout the stadium? You figure, okay, I've got to be somewhere near left field in case he hits one in my direction? You know, with A-Rod, my strategy was actually to play him oppo. Yankee Stadium, of course, has that short porch. And I love sitting out there. Yeah, you can see the, the highlight right there. 95 mile an hour on the outside corner from Verlander. There I am, the olive green shirt, just celebrating like a madman. Uh, A-Rod can hit him anywhere. He can yank one down the left field line 450, or he can poke one to the short porch. So where do you play him? But I figured if he is going to go oppo, he's not going to hit it 450 to right field. So there'd be a smaller area within right field that I could pinpoint. So that was my strategy with him. But I look at charts sometimes and stadium diagrams, watch a lot of highlights, drive myself crazy about all the baseballs I'm not out there catching. Like, oh, you know, when I was at that stadium sitting in that section, they didn't hit anything. And now this game, they hit three of them right there. So I definitely drive myself crazy with this stuff. But it, the challenge is what makes it so much fun. Uh, the lament for all the balls lost. A-Rod obviously put up some great numbers, and Mike Trout continues to do so. Zach, it's amazing. You caught Trout's first home run ball, and I believe you have a crazy story about catching a bat from him. Well, yeah, Mike Trout uh, has been really cool to me ever since I caught his first home run in Baltimore and gave him that baseball after the game. I made a pretty nice catch on this one. You can see me climbing back over a row of seats while the ball was in midair. Um, you know, if you, if you go look at that replay again, you'll see it. Met Trout's family, his parents were there. I didn't ask him for anything when I gave him that ball. I just told security I wanted to be the one to hand it to him. And I always regretted as he got better and better and just became the superstar, but I didn't get anything from him. And so uh, a couple of years ago, I was like, hey, man, is it possible that I might be able to get a bat from you? Like, that would be so meaningful to me. He's like, yeah, I got you. And uh, it took a little while for our, you know, schedules to align. Like, I only see the Angels a handful of times on the road, but um, he saw me in Texas, you know, Globe Life Park, and uh, he hooked me up with a signed bat after the game. And I was so pumped up. That's just one of my most treasured possessions in, in all of baseball. So he's my favorite player by far. It was Cal Ripken Jr. for the longest time, but Trout finally surpassed him as my all-time number one. So, Zach, what do you do? Do you look at the schedule and say someone's approaching a milestone like Miguel Cabrera getting close to 3,000 hit, 500 home runs. Will there be a chase to find out and run down Miguel Cabrera to maybe you'll be in the right place at the right time to connect on one of those two? 
Absolutely. Sometimes I will book a last minute flight to a city to try to catch a certain baseball, whether it's a milestone home run or maybe a team is using a commemorative baseball for one day. They're retiring someone's number. They got a special ball with that logo and I want to try to get one. I'll buy special tickets. I've even bought tickets sometimes in three different sections for one game just so I can guarantee that I can move to different spots. So, um, yeah, I'll definitely be keeping an eye on Miggy. And, it, you know, it depends on which stadium he's likely to do it in. If he's at 499 and he's going to a place where the outfield configuration is really tough and hard to catch home runs, like let's say Anaheim, you know, they have the bullpens out in left field. Those swallow up a lot of home runs, and that's his power zone. Of course, he goes to right center, too. Maybe I won't bother making that trip, but if he's playing somewhere else where the outfield is wide open and there's a lot of seats to work with, I very well might make special plans to go try to catch that baseball. YouTube is a place not just for baseball, also lots of music. Michael Jackson's Beat It, you know, then there's Weird Al's version of Eat It. Speaking of eating it, that's what happened to you chasing down Brandon Belt's home run ball. Listen, Zach, this happens to the best of them. This is not about an indictment of your agility or athleticism, but seriously, what happened? You know, even Hall of Famers take an O for every now and then, right? <laughs> Ozzie Smith made a few errors in his career. You know, I just had a bad moment in Philly. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. All I can do is laugh at this point. I jumped over rows of seats hundreds of times in batting practice without incident. I take pride on being agile and athletic, and I don't know what happened. The one time I tried it on TV during a game, absolutely wiped out. And the even dumber thing is that there was like no one else around for social distancing. I just panicked and thought I had to get down to the front row as quickly as possible. If I just stopped and reached over the chairs, I could have picked up that ball. Thankfully, I wasn't hurt, um, and it's super embarrassing, but I'm glad that we can all laugh at it together now. And I do have a video about it on YouTube explaining exactly what went down and Oh, what a mess. No, but I think that's the most important thing, Zach. You're always very self-aware. I love that uh, piece that Real Sports did on you on HBO. It was fabulous because it pointed to the fact that, as I said off the top, some people say, who is this guy? He's a grown man who's a ball hog. What's wrong with him? What do you say to those critics? I'm doing what I love, and I'm absolutely not hurting anybody. So what's wrong with that? You know, um, I, I give a lot of baseballs to kids. I've given away thousands of baseballs. I've raised a couple hundred thousand dollars through my collecting efforts for Pitching for Baseball and Softball, which is a charity that provides equipment to kids and communities all over the world. And, you know, there's a lot of hate toward me online, which is really uncalled for. But in person, it's 99.9% .9 positive. I'd say an average of 100 people a day come up to me at Major League Stadiums. Everybody wants selfies. I sign baseballs. It's really strange. Like, who am I? Like, I, you know, I do videos and I'm a baseball fan. but. People go nuts for this stuff, and it's really positive in person. Uh, I don't knock people down. I've never done that. There's a lot of false rumors. Anybody can watch me for five minutes or for the next five years, and that's just not who I am or what I do. It's all about the good vibes. Well, I love the good vibes. Love what you're doing, and Dan and I can trust the fact. Just ignore social media. It's, it's yeah. never a good thing. Just post and get out of the way. Yeah. Zach Campbell, thanks it's so terrible. much. That's good advice. Yeah, and by the way, Dan will never forget the fact he gave you that ball. That's good stuff. That's it, Zach. If I see you again, if I come back out of retirement, <laughs> I'll throw you a ball in the second tank again. <laughs> I need that to happen. Let's do it. Boom. Let's get that GoFundMe goal. We'll get Sack back out there in the mail. In the meantime, Jay Happ's looking good. His fastballs, four seamers and sinkers, account for 80.8% of his total pitches this season. That's the highest fastball percentage among starters this season. So the 38-year-old keeping it real simple when it comes to fastball, four seamers and sinkers. And he's coming off one of the best outings of his 15-year career, coming within five outs of a no-hitter Friday against the Pirates. Happ, Twins, Indians, coming up. Sam Hentges, the pride of Boundsview High School. Swing and a miss. There's the breaking ball. Nice curve to get Adam Eaton for out number one. So he gets a swing and miss and strikes out his first major league hitter. My goodness. Another bullet, but this one is turned into a double play. That ball was hit so hard, Brett Gardner couldn't even freeze. Well, it was, yeah, right at you. Perfect. That's what you were looking for, a line drive. Oh boy, hammer, deep left center field, and it's going to one-hop the fence, backing it up as Gardner, Fran Mill around second, uh-oh, he's going to go for three, here's the throw, the big man goes in 
safe. Hammer, high in the air, deep left field. Vaughn's back. He's looking up. Gone to Souvenir City. Jordan Luplo gets the Indians on the board. High fly ball, right field, deep. Go. Judges back. He's out of room, and it's out of here. Fran Mill Reyes, and the Indians come right back and take the lead. Love Williams Acedillo, by the way. Him and Ahmed Rosario catching up a little bit. Uh, the MLB Game of the Week pregame show presented by Google Pixel. It is the Twins and the Indians coming up from Progressive Field just literally minutes away. Time now for Picks to Click presented by Bet MGM. My man Dan Plesak has all the answers. So these are really straightforward here. Who's going to win the AL Central? Coming in, all people thought Twins. Obviously a slow start for them. White Sox perhaps. Who do you got? White Sox. I think the cream will eventually rise to the top. Love their starting rotation, their depth in the bullpen. Michael Kopech has been throwing the ball really well. White Sox, I think, are the best team in the Central. Royals plus 550 might be a good value. Oh, pick. They've been really surprising. They're going to hang around for a long time. Yeah. They're a wild card team for sure. I like that. I like them in the conversation. All right, total runs scored today. I'm going to say over nine. I would say somewhere around 10 runs, 10 or above. I, I don't think. I think this day game ball travels well. I say nine over nine. Okay, over unders at nine. So you're going to take the over on this one. We got AL Central total runs. How about more likely to go deep? Nelly Cruz or Fran Mill Reyes? I'm going to go with the boomstick because I, I like the matchup this afternoon. I, I just think this ballpark, the weather's warming up in Cleveland right now. I'm going boomstick. He's my favorite player in the AL right now. All right, we go from the offense back to the pitching. So Jay Happ, over under number of strikeouts. This guy's coming off, as you mentioned, spectacular performance on Friday. Three and a half Ks, over or under? I'm, I'm going to go over because something tells me he's going to be in this game long enough to go six or seven innings. I see him five strikeouts. Okay, yeah, not necessarily a guy who's a high strikeout guy, which also brings us to Logan Allen. Now, first two starts really good, last two starts not great. Nine runs over four to third innings. Same over under, three and a half strikeouts for Logan Allen. I'm going to go under. I just think sooner or later this Twins offense is going to get going. They've lost the first two games of the series. I think they're going to come out swinging the sticks under. And that's what I was about to say when it comes to Cleveland Indians overall. You said the White Sox, you think they're going to be there. The Royals could be a wild card team. Where do you see the Indians? Is this a 500 team? Are they a little better than that? I think they're a 500 team. I don't know if the Indians have a, as much enough consistent offense. They score runs in bunches. Luplo has been really good. He's been a savior for them. Mm -hmm. Fran Mill Reyes is starting to get going. They miss have it. They 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 miss not having Francisco Lindor. Yeah. They're not the same team offensively. They're going to struggle to score. Yeah, power certainly is an issue for Cleveland. We saw that from a season ago, particularly their outfield. You mentioned the Nelly Cruz and Fran Mill Reyes. It makes me think of just like strongest guys in the game. Was there a guy when you play that used to you know what pound for pound you could put him against Cruz or, or Fran Mill like just a strong. Big old guy. I, I could tell you this, and I thought about this. You, I knew you were going to ask this. I think back at that Oakland A's teams, the Bash brothers, yeah. Canseco, McGuire, Dave Henderson, Ricky Henderson. When Canseco and McGuire walked into the box, and then they really got your attention. Yeah. I pitched for 18 seasons, and there were very few teams and lineups mm -hmm. When you're pitching that you're like, whoo, boy, I, I don't want to say intimidated, but sure. you, you really had your thought process was I better bring my A game. When you face those 1980s Oakland A's, yeah. Canseco, McGuire, Carney Lansford, Dave Parker. <laughs> Carney Lansford, woo, yeah. Oh, that, that, was, that was not good. It's like those old commercials. Where's the beef? Oh, oh, I'm looking at it right you're now. You're looking at it. It's right in the batter's in box. In the batter's box. <laughs> uh, and just to go back to Minnesota Twins, we know they're slow starts, but sometimes it does get concerning, right? When you go, wow, it's a slow start. Eventually you go, hey, dude, it's May 1st. It's May 24th. We're still 10 games under 500. When do you get concerned if you're Minnesota? I'm concerned now because their bullpen has not been very good. They bring in Colome, who was terrific with the White Sox, yeah. right? White Sox signed Liam Hendricks. Most people in baseball thought the Colome signing, this was a guy that didn't allow a home run 
all of 2020, right? I know it was only a 60-game season. He was dominant. Never been a strikeout guy. Yeah. He has really struggled. The Twins' bullpen has been bad. And before yesterday's game, Baldelli said Colley will now be used in low leverage situations. To your point, he is not going to be the closer, at least in the imminent future. Bullpen 6.16 ERA during this 15-game slump. Poll results. Who's going to win today's game? How about the Twins? 56% right now. So people in the land of the 10,000 lakes are feeling pretty good about Minnesota. Well, the Twins have lost 13 of the last 15 games, but Jim told me we love. He's going to be on the call, the Hall of Famer with Scott Braun and Latroy Hawkins. He had a couple of Hall of Fame votes, played for 11 different teams over two decades. John Morosi as well. Enjoy the game. Burst of warmth in Cleveland for a home crowd that has been highly entertained this week and it's two franchises on YouTube today that have hogged the AL Central throne for the past five years. A day game available for the world to see the MLB game of the week live on YouTube presented by Google Pixel. We're in Ohio. The Minnesota Twins and Cleveland Indians met up on Monday for the first time in 2021. They will cap off the series today at Progressive Fields. Let's go. Hello, everyone watching worldwide on YouTube. I'm Scott Braun, stationed in Studio K. Many friends joining me soon. So we have a matchup of two teams that have taken up the AL Central at the top for the past five seasons. So you look back at Cleveland, they took three. And then the past two years, it's been in favor of Minnesota. The Twins had high hopes heading into this season. They're off to a 7-15 and start. The bullpen has been a big problem for them. On the other side, Cleveland trades away Francisco Lindor and Carlos Carrasco in the offseason. So far, a 500 ball club going for a sweep right here on YouTube. Tell your friends it's free. Check out what we do if you're joining us for the first time. We'll have over 20 games exclusively on YouTube this season. Easy to find us. YouTube.com slash MLB. Join the 2.8 million plus other fans by subscribing to the MLB YouTube channel. The bell icon is the way to receive notifications before upcoming games. YouTube TV customers like me are hooked up with the game and an MLB pop-up within the channel guide. We're going to talk to players on the field today. We'll have players mic'd up. We have two of the nicest, most down-to-earth, most durable former ball players joining us today. Latroy Hawkins, who was drafted by the Twins back in 1991, longtime twin, and the Hall of Famer Jim Tomey, who played for both Cleveland and Minnesota, among other clubs. Gentlemen, it's so great to see you. We are very Midwest-focused today, and another friend joining us from the Midwest in just a few. Latroy, you start us off on this Twins team, because Byron Buxton, when he's healthy, looks like one of the best players in the league right now, and we saw him return yesterday with a bang. How does he look to you? He looks outstanding. We're actually witnessing a star being born. You know, he was drafted fourth overall, you know, had some injuries early in his career, but this year in 2021, he's starting to absolutely crush the ball. If you look at his OPS at 1276, he is doing everything he needs to do to be successful. He's using all parts of the field, and once he understood that, we're starting to see him just blossom at the plate. On the other hand, has to stay healthy. Byron Buxton has to stay healthy. Where Byron Buxton goes, the Minnesota Twins goes. And as you can see, eight of his hardest hit home runs, five of them have been hit this year. We're measuring hard contact. Hard contact, how often you can barrel the ball. And that's the Twins' motto of a hitting. Find you a good pitch that you can get a good, put a good swing on and hit it hard somewhere. That was StatCast 3D powered by Google Cloud showing us the clout that Byron Buxton brings to the table. And even if you're unaware of how some of these statistics are formulated, all you need to know is brute strength, hitting the baseball hard. Byron Buxton is at the top of the class in all of the categories that StatCast helps us with to measure the work that he does when he is healthy and on the field. He'll be leading off today for the Minnesota Twins. On the other hand, we have a Cleveland squad that's going for a sweep today, Jim Tomey, and Jose Ramirez has developed into a superstar. In fact, he's regularly a part of the MVP conversation. What do you like about him? 
He, well, I love everything about him. You know, first of all, I love where he stands on home plate. He's close to home plate. He's got great plate coverage. Uh, as you know, when Cleveland goes, he goes. <clears throat> Ramirez, you know, the last four seasons, it's finished in the top three MVP voting three times. Yes, count them three times. When Cleveland goes, he definitely goes. Look at this year wins. You know, Cleveland's got 11. He's got six home runs and 11 ribbies in those 11 wins. You know, we we talked to Terry Francona before the game, and he just said simply, this guy is a force in the middle of our lineup. And I know the Cleveland fans love this kid, and he's, he's really improved every year, and he's just so much fun to watch. He is a rock in the lineup. You combine him with Fran Mill Reyes, who had two home runs yesterday. That is the meat of the order for the Cleveland Indians. And we have another friend stationed in Cleveland, Ohio today. Talking Midwest nice. Let's say hello to J.P. Morosi with more on the home team. J.P.? Scott, good afternoon from Cleveland, where it was just five years ago that one of the best World Series we had ever witnessed culminated here at Progressive Field. But in that short amount of time, the institutional memory on the Cleveland side has begun to fade. Just three players on the active roster today who appeared in that 2016 Fall Classic, one of whom, Jose Ramirez, is in the lineup today. Roberto Perez has the day off behind the plate, and Brian Shaw in the bullpen has already played for two different teams since the end of that 2016 World Series. Speaking of longtime Cleveland Indians, one roster move today, Nick Whitgren rejoins the bullpen. He takes the place of Oliver Perez, who was designated for assignment by the Indians this morning. After a long tenure here in Cleveland, he is someone who has 696 appearances in Major League Baseball games as a pitcher. That's second only to Joaquin Soria among Mexican-born pitchers in Major League Baseball history. The hero of last night's game, last night's win for the Cleveland Indians, was Fran Mill Reyes, who grew up in the Dominican Republic, idolizing Vladimir Guerrero Sr. Well, perhaps he took a page from Vlad Sr.'s playbook last night. Two home runs, yes, on the same night that Vlad Jr. hit three for the Toronto Blue Jays. Of course, Fran Mill Reyes back in the starting lineup for the Indians this afternoon in support of Jose Ramirez, that longtime Cleveland Indians star. Scott, back to you. JP, they call him Franimal for a reason. The dude's a beast with a money nickname, which we'll dive into later. We have lineups and first pitch from Progressive Field. Coming up, the MLB Game of the Week presented by Google Pixel starts in a moment. Driven to the gap in right field. Bates hit. Buxton on the first pitch. Jumping on the fastball. And the Twins have runners at first and second with two down. And that'll bring up Byron Buxton. Driven to right field toward the corner. And Buxton drops one into the corner of fair ball. And he'll go into second with a double. And now a blast to left center field. Buxton with a diving catch in center. Oh, what a catch by Byron Buxton. Preserving the lead. A tremendous catch by Buxton to keep the Twins up 10 to 9. First pitch, a swing and a fly ball, left center field and deep. Back it goes, deep it goes and gone! Adding to that day, what was good is now even better. A 10th inning two run blast from Buxton, and the Twins have a 12 10 lead in the 10th at the Coliseum. How much more can he do in one baseball game? That's hit to the gap in left center field, and Buxton dies and makes another tremendous catch.
warmer weather in Cleveland, Ohio the past 48 hours. The MLB Game of the Week live on YouTube is presented by Google Pixel, and hopefully the rain holds off today. Looks like we'll start here on time. The Twins and the Indians finishing up their three-game series. And for Minnesota, this is not the start that they expected. Stumbling out of the gate, seven wins, 15 losses for Rocco Baldelli and his squad, which he leads for the third consecutive season still the youngest manager in Major League Baseball, and still, and always, younger than one of his star bats, Nelson Cruz. But Latroy, last 15 games for Minnesota have produced just two wins, and Rocco Baldelli talked to the team after yesterday's loss and says, it's like the guts are being ripped out of us. The bullpen has had their struggles. What have you observed? Uh, just the late inning drama, uh, lack of offense, and the bullpen was built to be a lot better than what they are. They've definitely struggled. A lot of room for improvement. As you can see, late in the games, they hadn't won any of those. They've had four walk-offs. Uh, they've lost four games in seven inning double hitters. They just hadn't been able to make the pitches when they needed to. Yeah, Minnesota, four and eight on the road. It's the one run games, it's the extra inning games. You add it all up, they're at the bottom of the division below the Tigers at the moment. It's only April, let's chill. Seven wins, 15 losses, you move up to the standings, and the Indians check in at 11 and 11 on the year. Byron Buxton back in the lineup yesterday with a bang, of course, his seventh home run of the season, and he leads Major League Baseball with an out of this world 847 slugging percentage. Josh Donaldson will hit second. Nelson Cruz was at the cleanup spot yesterday. He's back to the three hole. Jorge Polanco back in the lineup today. Mitch Garver loves left handed pitching. That's what he's going up against with Cleveland. Brent Rooker in right. Astudio at first. Andrelton Simmons back on Monday from the COVID injured list. And Alex Kirloff gets the start, even though he's a lefty. He'll get the start in the nine spot against this southpaw. Logan Allen on the mound, making his fifth start of the season. He's had two up and two down. The last two have been tough for him, including a bad matchup against the Yankees. Just four runs recorded, uh, or four runs allowed, seven outs recorded. And he has a 6-2-8 ERA so far on the season. You can see at the bottom there, the last two starts, nine runs allowed. Latroy, this is a 23-year-old still finding himself. And Terry Francona told us this morning, they're preaching consistency and the aggressiveness that they saw from him in spring training, they hope to see slip into the regular season now. Yes, he has to control his emotions and you know, there are three keys to the game and four seam effectiveness, using his high fastball for swing and misses against the twin hitters. He has to keep right hand hitters honest. And what I mean by that is pitching inside on a case to case basis and execute. The Indians have had a great game plan against the Twins hitters. If he can continue that, he can follow that plan, he's going to have a great day. Now your Google Pixel defensive alignment for the Cleveland Indians. It looks like this. Austin Hedges gets the day from Roberto Perez, who caught last night. He'll play catch with Logan Allen. Yu Chang at first. He starts against lefties. Hernandez at second. Rosario and Ramirez on the left side in the outfield from left to right. Rosario, Luplo, and Josh Naylor. And we're ready to go at Progressive Field. Byron Buxton's going to lead the way for Minnesota, a Twins team that is desperately looking for a W to try and salvage a game in this series. A worldwide audience watching on YouTube. First pitch on its way from Logan Allen. It's taken up and away. Tied for the most home runs in the American League with seven. The only thing that can hold him back is the infirmary. Strained hamstring earlier this month. And he's going to go the other way. Josh Naylor fading back, and it's gone! Second pitch of the game. Byron Buxton muscles up. It's his eighth home run of the season, and the Twins grab a 1-0 lead. It's easy power, Jim Tony. Boy, this guy's... This guy is on a roll. I mean, you know, that ball actually got a little bit deep on him. And where he's at, where he stands in the box, what a great swing. You know, I mean, to stay back, 
LaTroy and use your hands like that and know you can shoot the ball out the right field is just so impressive. Well, I think that's been a key for Buxton this year. He's understanding, as you know how important that is, Jim, is using the entire field. He has to use the entire field to continue to be successful. Third career leadoff home run for Buxton, and that brings us to Donaldson, who's recorded 11 hits this season. Over 300, was on the injured list earlier this year with a hamstring strain. Same thing with Donaldson. Keep him on the field, 35 years old, and the Twins lineup will do a lot more damage. Yes, they will. And Latroy, you played with Donaldson back in his Toronto days, 2015, right? Yes, I actually handed him his MVP trophy from that season. Get out, how'd you pick up that job? Somebody in New York thought it would be cool for me to give him, <laughs> hand him his award. What was but he Logan like? Allen, you know, left, lefty. Donaldson, he's just, he's on 100 all day long. Like, his energy level is so high in the clubhouse, and he's going to challenge all his teammates to be better than they were the day before. I don't care if you went for four for four. Donaldson's going to say, hey, you need to be better than you were yesterday. So, guys, what's interesting here, he's got two strikes on him, and he kind of went to the no stride right there, which I have not seen Donaldson do this. Let's watch the remaining of this at bat and watch. Let's see if he, if he flat foots with his front foot and keeps it down. No, he tapped it, but, you know, he's such a great hitter, Latroy. It's, it's fun to watch this kid because when he gets really hot, he can carry a ball club. Yeah, he's, uh, he's, he's that type of player. You're right. He get on his back and he'll drive the bus. But what's great about him, he can hit that fastball. I've seen him get on top of more fastballs than unbelievable. That one twists foul. Logan Allen uses the fastball, the four-seamer, about half the time. His strikeout pitch that has emerged over the past few seasons is the slider. He said it's come a long way in the last few years. And Donaldson clocks that one to deep left. Forget about it. The Twins go back to back to start the game. Josh Donaldson records his second home run of the season, and it's 2-0 Minnesota. They're not messing around here, Scotty. They are coming out ready to hit. And, uh, you know, this is a really, really good offense. The Twins, when they start scoring runs, they're a dangerous team for sure. Uh, they definitely had struggles on the offensive part of the game. But when you hang change-ups like this, that's an elevated change-up. I mean, that's right in his wheelhouse. And, you know, he stays back on the ball better than, you know, some of the best in the game and good results is going to happen. It doesn't get any easier with the 40 year old Nelson Cruz taking a breaking ball for a strike. Hey, Latroy, Bomba Squad was the big nickname that emerged for this entire ball club in 2019. We're seeing shades of that in this first inning against Logan Allen. Well, they're definitely going to need that that same type of uh, swagger from Bomba Squad in 2019 to, to get this season turned back around. And for Logan Allen, he's given up five home runs to the last 10 batters he's faced. That goes back to his start against the Yankees. We talked about Logan Allen. You know, uh, Francona talked about in the interview saying he has to keep his emotions in check. And this is a prime example of you know, you gave up two home runs. You can control your nerves and make good pitches and get your team in there so they can get a, get a chance to hit as well. Four hundred twenty three feet of glory for Donaldson.
There's the tag team, Bash Brothers so far today. Payoff to Cruz, ball four. And Nelson Cruz is mic'd up today along with Shane Bieber, so listen to Cruz react to this home run. Oh, you face! <laughs> oh, daddy! You stole your line, Jim. That's what you used to say, right? <laughs> you know what? There were days, yes, that we said that. We got the boys going. And, you know, what I what I love about Nelson Cruz is his energy. You know, this guy comes to the ballpark every day. He's ready to go. And it's, it's, it's refreshing. A guy like that can rub off on these young guys. And what a, what a great leader he is to that ball club. You know, throughout the game, you can hear Nelson screaming, good, bad, doesn't matter what's going on. You can always hear him, and he's that calming voice for the guys that are on the team. As they chat with Logan Allen, let's get to the Google Pixel pitching breakdown. Latroy, obviously it's been a rocky start for Logan Allen, but let's talk about how he can pick things up with the scouting report. Well, that four-seam effectiveness, and that's throwing the ball over the plate, elevating that fastball, because it's been proven that he can get some swing and misses from the Minnesota Twins above the strike zone. Keep those righties honest. But it's Already has two home runs by the right-hand hitters, but both of those have been on mistake fastballs and execute to follow the game plan. There's two starters before in the first two games of this series. They had a great game plan that was very effective, and he can follow that. He can have a great, great day today. He misses again to Polanco. The twin second baseman back in the lineup after a day off yesterday. He's won for his last 12. And Allen finds the corner. By the Scotty, way, Scotty, another yep. really, really good player here. Really good player. This kid, you know, when you talk about energy and what he does up the middle, and, you know, he's just a dynamic type player that can get the twin. There you go. He tees off, and Jorge Polanco makes it three home runs in the first for the Twins. A burst of energy from this Twins offense. It's four zip. Talk about pitchers having to pitch ahead in the count and stay out of hitters counts. That 3-0, 3-1, 2-1 counts. And when you put yourself in that situation, you give the hitters an opportunity to do some damage like Polanco on this 3-1 fastball. Beautiful swing. Yeah, that's a dejected look from Logan Allen, who has now given up six home runs to the last 12 batters that he has faced. That wraps around from his last start. Today, it's Buxton, Donaldson, and Polanco in the first. Still no outs recorded in the opening frame for a Twins team that was a bit slow heading into today. They had lost 13 of 15 and already action in the bullpen for Cleveland. Latroy, how do you handle a situation like this with Logan Allen? Well, you see where the pitching coach, Carl Willis, went out to talk to him. It's just a situation where you have to control your emotions, take a step back behind the, the pitcher's mound, gather your th thoughts, and go back and make pitches. You have to make pitches. You have to get ahead in the count. Mitch Garver feasts on left-handed hitters. 30-plus home runs a couple seasons ago. Bat hasn't looked the same last year and in 2021. We talked to Rocco Baldelli about it this morning, and he said just get back to the basics. They'd like to see him drive the baseball to all fields. He said he was a hitter first in the minor leagues, and the power really exploded in 2019.
Allen struggling yeah, whenever, right now. Scotty, whenever Last two you pitches. get. Allen's 2-0. Taken on the outside corner. Go ahead, Jim. Well, I, I think the big thing, too, is when you can get out of April as a player, you know, you're dealing with cold weather, you're dealing with finding your groove, you're getting settled in. I mean, you know, look, look and I, I've personally had some really bad Aprils. I think when you get back on the fastball and stay on the fastball, then everything kind of flows in your at-bats. When you're trying to cover a breaking ball, change up, and the fastball, at bats can go in a real hurry and you know one of the things I think with Garver he's got so much power everywhere that you know eventually this kid's going to put up the numbers that he has I really I really like how aggressive he is at home plate so Tommy when you talk about get stand on the fastball but in the get today's game yeah. he's getting 50 50 and uh, most of the time they know he can't yeah. he can't adjust to the slider so they're throwing him all breaking ball so what is the mindset how do you how do you correct that well it, it great great question Latroy I think I think first of all first of all you have to be you have to know okay am I getting more fastballs than breaking balls and if I'm getting if I'm if they're throwing more breaking balls than they are fastballs to him then there's a couple things for me I think you have to move up in the box you and then it might be time to go ahead and sit on breaking balls if he's getting a ton of them but until then how guys really get out of their slump is you know, is when you do get those fastballs, not to miss them. You know, and, and if you miss them, then the at-bats go really quick and and you struggle early. That's what happens. So Allen puts away Garver, first out recorded in this game by the Cleveland starter, and now it's Brent Rooker. Rooker homered on Monday, first of the season, second of his career. Rooker has the power to uh, hit the ball a very long way. He's a strong, very strong young man. Latroy, what are you seeing from what Logan What I haven't Allen? seen from Logan today. What I had seen today <laughs> from Logan is... That fastball in on right-hand hitters, you have to keep them honest. If they're gonna, if you're gonna give them everything over the heart of the plate, you're not gonna be out there long. You have to let them know that you're not afraid to take one half of the plate. And running that fastball in on their hands or throwing that slider up under their hands. You can see the Cleveland Indians have received the fewest starts from Southpaws since the start of 2018. They're hoping Logan Allen can fill the void. His 3-2 is hit hard. Deep left field off the bat of Rooker, and that is caught in the corner. Eddie Rosario makes the catch, and there are two gone. About 318 feet, and Rosario is there. Now Williams asked to Dio, and this is just a complete turnaround from yesterday, Jim. This Twins team could barely get the ball out of the infield. It was ground ball after ground ball against Cleveland starter Aaron Savali, and now we are seeing loud contact deep into the night or into the day I should say against Logan Allen so far today you sure have I think that was one thing a year ago when you looked at the twins is the minute they dug their back foot into the box they were ready to hit and you know they they really 
They were aggressive on everything. And I've always admired that. I've loved that about Minnesota's team is they come out of the dugout ready to hit. And I think that's what you're seeing today. As to Dio going the other way, and that's caught. Josh Naylor hauls it in. But the Twins do damage. They set the record for homers in 2019, and they're giving a shade to Bomba Squad again. Buxton, Donaldson, and Polanco add it all up. It's 4 0 Minnesota. We'll get to the bottom of the first coming up. Is Gardner, Fran Mill around second. Uh oh, he's gonna go for three. Here's the throw. The big man goes in safe. Franimal with a triple. Hammered. Deep left field, and it's over the head of Clint Frazier up against the wall. Coming around third and scoring is Cesar Hernandez. Ramirez will stop at third in the second with an RBI double is Fran Mill Reyes, and the Indians take a one-nothing lead. Runner goes, and Sanchez dropped the ball. It'll be a steal for Franville Reyes, his first. Well, look at the big man go. Looked like Maury Wills to me. Lou Brock, there he goes. Big man gets in there, gets a stolen base. Why not? High fly ball, right field, there deep. Go. Judges back. He's out of room, and it's out of here. Fred Mill blast off deep center field. It is off the wall. It took a crazy carom. Here's the throw. It will not be in time. It's his second triple of the series. Four for the Twins after a half inning. Let's set up the Google Pixel starting nine for Cleveland, the home squad. Cesar Hernandez, the switch hitter, will lead things off. Jordan Luplo playing against lefties and righties this season. And the great Jose Ramirez, four home runs and eight RBIs during an 11 in game on base streak. Fran Mill Reyes coming off two big homers yesterday. Eddie Rosario matching up against his former team. And then Ahmed Rosario at short. Naylor. Chang and Hedges to round out the nine. Jay Happ on the mound and Latroy, he's coming off one of the best starts of his career. He was five outs away from no hitting Pittsburgh in the cold in his third start as a twin. That was on Friday. He had a great start. You're right, seven in the third, no hit baseball. He had everything working. His fastball was perfectly placed. Uh, his pitch usage, you know, using his breaking ball, mixing in the changeup. Everything was working at night. Hopefully he can have some carryover to the day against the Cleveland Ball Club. Career on base percentage for Cesar Hernandez around 35% of the time he's reaching base. And he'll work in a working at bat. That's three and one the count to start off the day. Jay Happ wants to know where that was. But Jim, how do you strategize? against Jay Happ, who just brings the same consistency for years now. Once he kind of transformed himself with the Pittsburgh Pirates back in the 2015-2016 range, he figured out fastballs are my thing, four seam up, sinkers down, and there's one on the ground for the shortstop Simmons. Easy toss to first, one away. Yeah, I think I think <clears throat> it's like we talked. I think you got to be ready to hit. You, you know, this is a guy that's going to attack with his fastball. He is going to go up and down. But, you know, you don't want to get behind on this guy. And when you get the opportunity, you know, when you get an opportunity to score on Hap, I feel like you have to do it because if he gets settled in, you know, as we've seen in his last start, he can really get locked in and into the flow of the game. So, and he, you know, he's been around a long time. He really knows how to pitch.
Now up against Jordan Luplo, who was Mr. Walk-Off home run on Monday for Cleveland. Troy, you see the difference right there. His fastball in is inside for strikes. You know, Logan Allen's ball was more in the middle to out over the plate when he threw his fastball. Like, more in that area right there where Hap, you know, Hap seems to be throwing the ball. When he does throw it in, it's it's in-in to where either the hitter takes it or you get jammed. Because you know, Jim, with that mindset, when you're going in with that fastball, especially from those left lefty left hand pitcher to right hand hitter any any mishap and the ball is going to end up right down the middle and that's what happened to logan and logan allen and if he can um he continues to do that it would be a short night for him All right, so let's get a little more on Jay Happ, the starter for Minnesota, your Google Pixel pitching breakdown. Latroy, 81% of the time, it's a fastball from the 38-year-old. Yeah, you gotta, he has to pitch ahead in the count. Stay out of those 2-1, 2-0, 3-1, 3-0 counts. Those are hitter counts. Uh, the carryover magic is 7 and one third, no-hit baseball last Friday against the Pittsburgh Pirates. And drive the bus. Team is on a losing streak. This is the guy, the way he's pitched so far this season, he's the guy to stop this losing streak and get a W for his team today. He's been on the bus for 15 big league seasons. 3-2 is socked to deep center. Buxton giving it a look, and he's got some room right near the warning track for out number two. And now a look at the defensive setup for the Minnesota Twins, presented by Google Pixel. And this is something that the front office was proud of in the offseason, picking up Angleton Simmons. That moves Jorge Polanco from shortstop to second. The year before that, the pickup of Donaldson gives them more of a solidified look at the hot corner and pushed Miguel Sano over to first base. Sano's on the injured list, so it's Williams ask Estudio today. Kirilov, Buxton, and Rooker are in the outfield. And now Jose Ramirez, back-to-back -back games with a homer. And Jim, you mentioned his plate coverage and the fact that he's close to home plate. Why does that benefit him? Well, I think it, it, it eliminates the pitcher. You know, I, I think it makes the pitcher nervous, knowing that a guy, if, he can, if a pitcher's going to throw the ball away, it's in Ramirez's middle of the plate for him where he stands. When... When I was in Cleveland, Charlie Manuel used to move us on the plate for that reason. It cuts down the distance where the pitcher has to throw. And in a way, it makes them kind of nervous to a point where, like, I don't want to miss, but I do have to throw the ball inside. And, and Latroy, by standing on the plate, and, and I'm looking at Ramirez here, right-handed, he's a little more off than he is left-handed. But as a pitcher, when a guy was on the plate, what did you think? What 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 was your thoughts? 2-1 is well, driven to center field. Earlier. That's going to drop for a base hit for Ramirez. So a two-out base runner for Cleveland. Go ahead, Latroy. That ball was smoked, by the way. Uh, we talked about this earlier, Jim. Like, challenge a pitcher to throw three fastballs inside for a strike is that's not an easy thing to do. You can throw it inside three times in a row, but will they all be strikes? So he's telling the pitcher, you can do that. And if you can do that, I'll tip my hat. But I'm going to take my chances on you making a mistake over the middle of the plate or middle away, which is still down the middle with him standing so close to the plate. Don't make a mistake to this man, especially in the past week. Fran Mill Reyes is seven for his last 12 three home runs during that span and two of them yesterday. Those two home runs he hit off of Kenta Maeda were two of the loudest home runs I'd heard this season. They were loud. It sounded like a car crash. 
you were watching that game on your phone yesterday, the, the phone is vibrating and no one's calling. It's just Fran Mill Reyes, <laughs> 452 <laughs> feet, and the next one just 434. He's six foot five, and he is taking advantage of his big body and all of the power that he brings to the table. Ramirez on first after the base hit. It's a ball and a strike to Reyes. Hard hit rate. He is number three in Major League Baseball. That means ball off the bat at at least 95 miles an hour. Only Giancarlo Stanton and Ronald Acuna do it more often. All three of his hits yesterday were over 100 miles an hour off the bat. That was a close pitch, guys. I think Cap wanted that one. Maybe a Just little at the down, bottom of the zone. It's one of those pitches could go either way. There's the experience right there. He went down in the zone and then he elevated him. What'll be what'll be interesting here 2-2 two, two, is where he goes 2-2 two, two after going low, then high. Let's uh let's see what he does 2-2. Two, two. I like to see him elevate that fastball again. He does. And he picks up the strikeout his first of the game. So Jay Happ leaves Jose Ramirez on. It's a scoreless first. The Twins come up to bat again, coming off three home runs in the opening frame. Get a man aboard for Alex Kirloff. Going to left center field. And he's got his first big league hit, almost to the same spot of his second inning blast. Cruz going to third, and Kirilov is safe with a double. Congratulations to Kirilov, finally getting his first big league hit. And the Indians now trail it two to one. Anxious to see this at bat for Emil Reyes. There's the slider off the end of the bat. Will it get down? It will. Coming around third base with the tying run is Eddie Rosario. Throw to the plate. Not in time. It's a 2-2 game. How about this? Rios is done. He is out of the game because Baldelli forgot you can't make two trips to the mound in one inning. Unbelievable. Jose Ramirez 0 for 3 steps to the plate batting left-handed. Hammer deep right down the line. Home run! Tie game! They played with fire and they got burnt. Jordan Luplo with that runner at second. High fly ball, deep left field. Lynn is back, looking up. It's gone to Souvenir City, and the Indians have their first walk off of the year. A four run surge for the Twins in the first inning off of Logan Allen, and he discussed things with Shane Bieber between the inning, and Bieber is mic'd up today, so lucky for us, we get to listen in. Stay with it, kid. Come on, come on. You got USA and Canada saying it's charcuterie. I thought it was charcuterie. Charcuterie. Yeah, you're, you're going to get exiled. Yeah, that works. <laughs> so you want to know what's going on with one of the top pitchers in the game when it's not a start day? Charcuterie. Did he say it right, Latroy? Uh, I better get this right because my daughter's in London listening. Yeah, I think it's <laughs> charcuterie. We're talking about the charcuterie board, right, with the cheeses and the the prosciutto. Yes, he said it right. I hope so. That's the only board I know. And tell your daughter to, to send a text <laughs> to make sure it's confirmed because it's definitely not my specialty. What about you, Jim? It's the same thing, Scotty. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but just a, a little, little tap and a little word of encouragement to Logan Allen from Shane Bieber 
who is a Cy Young winner from last year and has a smile on his face. Maybe just to give him a little boost of confidence heading into this second inning, bottom portion of the order against Minnesota. Trouble locating on that pitch, though. Well, for me, with Logan Allen, guys, it looks like he wants to try to overthrow. So his top half is opening up way too fast. He's not staying closed long enough to give himself an opportunity to drive that pitch into the zone. Rosario puts away Simmons. And hey, we'd like to set you up with our first poll of the day on YouTube. Very easy to chime in. Very simple. How many more no hitters will we see this season? Maybe it's from the guy right above, Shane Bieber. Zero more. So we've had two already. One more, two more, three plus. And of course, we're coming off Jay Happ's last start where he was five outs away. And he's pitching again today as Kirilov takes the first pitch downstairs. Also, you had Madison Bumgarner over the weekend contribute seven no-hit innings, but not officially ruled a no-hitter. So first off, let's get a pick. What do you think, LaTroy? I would like, to, being a pitcher, I would like to see three or more. <laughs> so Jim, I'm assuming you're going to say zero? <laughs> I, 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 I would, for the hitters, I should say zero, but I, I personally think there's going to be two more is my call. I, I think the pitching nowadays is just so, so good, and these guys are preparing at an incredible level, and it's so much fun to watch. You know, I, I think, you know, to have this many this early in April, I do believe we could have at least one or maybe two more. I'm with you, Jim. I'm going to go two. So everyone get involved. It's an interactive polling feature. You can offer your multiple choice response to questions. We'll provide them throughout the day in the live game commentary and results coming soon. The rookie, Eric Alex Kirilov, doesn't bite. Two balls and two strikes. 23 years old. So you're saying Bumgartner. Scott, you said Bumgartner wasn't credited with a no-hitter because it was seven innings. Correct. There was some controversy Correct. there, some fans, and many in the baseball world it just be wanted to see it happen. You wanted to see it be official for Madison? Why not? It's official if he can get the loss. A lot of things can happen. He didn't change the innings. <laughs> Kirilov up the <laughs> middle, and deal. that's a base hit. Yeah, you're right. It was seven innings. He got the job done. Things are a little unique this year, just like last year. Double headers only go seven innings. Kirilov is aboard with a base knock with one out here in the second. What about you, Jim? Do you think Bumgarner should have a no-hitter now added to his uh, resume? Absolutely. If we're going to play seven innings and a guy goes out and no-hits a team, he should be credited with a no-hitter. It's not his fault that seven innings was, yes. you know, what we're doing now, how many innings we're playing. He, You can't. You have to reward the young man for going out and doing his job, and that's what he did. By the way, longest active no-hitter drought in Major League Baseball now belongs to this Cleveland team, Len Barker back in 1981. We hadn't seen one in Padres franchise history, but Joe Musgrove was able to scratch that off. Scott, you have me thinking. Somebody can tell us when was the Twins' last no-hitter? I'm going to get Eric you that. Eric Milton? I will have that answer if for it you. It was Eric Milton. It was a day no. game. Let go further along. Francisco Liriano, 2011. Oh, I missed that one. I was still playing. <laughs> you were busy. Who were you with at that point? <laughs> 2000, Milwaukee Brewers. Byron Buxton trying to follow up his homer to start the day with some more power. He's been full of it. StatCast powered by Google Cloud. And Buxton left the building in a hurry. 32 degrees on the launch angle, 350 feet. Get this, though. That's a home run in only four major league ballparks. Otherwise, it's often a flyout. Only 30, I believe, 32% hit expectancy on that one off the bat of Buxton, but he picked the right park to go the other way. 
Well, see, I would have a problem meeting. with that. I would only have a problem with that if this was the only park that that would have been a home run in. <laughs> but there are <laughs> others, so we're good. Right. Kirilov advances into scoring position. I mean, this is the gauntlet coming up here. It's Buxton, Donaldson, and then Cruz. Skipper Rocco Baldelli's been tinkering with the lineup lately. Counts full to Buxton. Yesterday, Nelson Cruz was in the four spot. Buxton was hitting third. Cruz had a triple yesterday. He sure did. <laughs> so you guys see that 2-2 that two -two slider that Logan just threw to Buxton? Previous years, that's a pitch that Buxton would be swinging at. And he swings at the 3-2 and gets it past the infield. And that's going to move Kirilov over to third. Buxton with the hustle into second. He's got himself a double. Blazing speed from the leadoff man who can check off a double and a homer in his first two at-bats of the day. Fellas, there's so many things this guy does. There's so many things this guy does from an offensive end, from his base running. There's so many ways he wins games, LaTroy. It's so impressive. He, he might be, if not the most dynamic player right now in the game as far as all the package. Like, you know, out of the box, if you probably watched him, he was thinking too right away. And, you know, I've, I've watched him over the last few years. And when you get to the ballpark, I mean, there's a lot of things that jump out at you. I mean, to watch this guy run alone is so impressive. I, I, I don't think in my career I've ever seen anyone just glide and run like this. And he it's knocks so out the starting pitcher too, Jim. And Logan Allen's day is done after just four outs recorded for a second consecutive start, giving up a few home runs. Big on of me with my ball glove. Hart is palpitating. On a 2-2 pitch, throws his bat at the pitch and fouls it into the crowd. I've heard a throw in the barrel, but this is extreme. That was awesome. This is an indication that Guriel doesn't squeeze the bat too tightly. Run it out in front of the plate. It's a fair ball. Throw to second there. Double play. Vieto with the throw, who was coming in to get it. Oviedo had to get out of dodge in a hurry. Watch your lips on this one. Johan Oviedo hits it that quickly. McKinney slaps one, left side, gonna be a tough play, Baez, look out. Wow, into the net it goes, never had a grip. And even Javi can smile about that one, just trying, trying to get rid of it. This is in the air to left field, and it's gonna get in for a base hit. He hit that ball twice. Did you see that? The ball was in, he got jammed, and he hit it twice. First time, there, breaks it, and then off the barrel. Hey, MLB Originals Season 2 is live on YouTube with new episodes every week. See your favorite players and learn more about the game you love on YouTube.com slash MLB. Rocco Baldelli must be pleased with the hot start from his ball club, knocking out starting pitcher Logan Allen. We are just in the second. One down, two on for Josh Donaldson. It was Kirilov in the nine hole with a base hit, followed by Buxton's double. And in comes Trevor Steffen, the 25-year-old, last pitched on Friday against the Yankees, gave up a run in his two innings. That run was a solo home run off the bat of Giancarlo Stanton.
And that just missed to Donaldson. Big pitch for Stefan is his slider. J.D. also contributing a home run in the first. Scott Braun, Latroy Hawkins, Jim Tomey, and J.P. Morosi. We are in Cleveland. And Donaldson fouls that one back. So a hot start for Minnesota. Latroy, yesterday, Rocco Baldelli talks to the team after the game. And he spoke to us this morning and mentioned, despite the struggles, bullpen, injuries, some players dealing with bouts of COVID, there has never been a lack of hustle. We have seen every game from this Minnesota twin bring, Twins team bringing the fire, bringing the competitiveness. This guy helps the cause. When you have a team who's, who's been struggling, you know, that's the first thing a manager looks for. Are they still hustling? Hustling, uh, how they're approached, their attitude. And Rocco was saying all those things are intact. They just hadn't been able to win games. And, you know, they've, they've lost a lot of close games. But the way this team was constructed, I'm willing to bet that those close games are going to start to turn into wins. I remember being with the Rockies in 2007. We were 10 and 15 coming out of the month of, of April. And we ended up 90 and 73. You know, we end up winning 90 games. So there's there's time for them to recover. And nobody has completely taken over the central division. And Jim, if you're Cleveland, they have an off day tomorrow. Logan Allen did not have it. So Terry Francona figures, hey, Jose Ramirez and Fran Mil Reyes get hot again later in this game. We've got a shot. It's 4 nothing in the second inning. Plenty of time to go in this one. Yeah, if you can stop it from here on, you know, with Cleveland, especially those guys in the middle of the order, you know, you can put up runs quick, you know, but but here on out, you got to hold them. And, uh, you know, Minnesota's, Minnesota's offense, at times that can be a tough task. So this will be, this will be interesting to watch how it all plays out you know, as as this young kid comes in the game and how he attacks these Twins hitters. He loses Donaldson. That loads up the bases. And let's bring in JP. Well, Scott, the American League Central is near and dear to all of us on this broadcast, of course. And so I must note the following. The best record in the American League today belongs to the Kansas City Royals, a 636 winning percentage. They are two games above the White Sox there atop the division. One of the more surprising developments, I believe, Scott, in all of Major League Baseball this month. Well, they were moving in the offseason. Kansas City doing some work, bringing back Mike Miner, trading for Andrew Benintendi. They signed Carlos Santana to a two-year contract, former Cleveland great. They have a young kid, uh, Bobby Witt Jr., too, that had a heck of a spring that I'm, I'm sure at some point we're, you know, baseball is going to see him shortly. What a, what a really good young player to add to what they have. Yeah, he's my favorite prospect in the sport. Bobby Witt Jr., whose father played in the bigs. Nelson Cruz, loud contact to right field, and it's off the top of the wall. That's going to score a couple for Minnesota. Nelson Cruz contributing the two-run single. It's 6-0, Minnesota. Almost left the yard. Would have been his 11th career grand slam. Nelson Cruz pounded that baseball to right. Buxton scores along with Kirilov. A fastball right down the middle, something that, that we all seen Cruz can definitely handle, and he was able to muscle that ball into off the right field wall. Nolan played to Karen perfect to keep him to a single. Those two base runners belong to Logan Allen, so the Cleveland starter who is out of the game has given up 15 runs in his last five and two-thirds innings. That's three total starts. Now Jorge Polanco, and we have I our... know into... Go ahead, Jim. No, I know in today's game we talk about launch angle, but 
what what I want to point out on that is to hit a ball like that to right field and hit it on the line straight. You know it, what a what a beautiful level swing that was that Nelson had and this guy if you watch him if if there's breaking balls down he'll go down and get them and get under him and lift them. But at the end of the day what I love that ball that's belled high Latroy and up he's got a real nice perfect level swing and uh, just something to point out there what a what a tremendous hitter this guy has become over over the years of his career. Polanco lobs one to left in comes Rosario for the catch on the run Two gone in the second. You mentioned it Jim Nelson Cruz feasts on pitches down or up unfazed. Yeah he's he really really hits from that backside so well you know it's he's really kind of preset to the back hip and you can see like he just when he's going well he'll let the ball get right there and boom he just drops the drops the barrel to the baseball and the ball just jumps off his bat anywhere left field center right it doesn't matter he's got the strength to go out anywhere. Runners stay put on the corners for Mitch Garver that just misses. First four hitters were successful for the Twins in the top of the first. Buxton homered. Donaldson followed with the same result. Cruz walked and Polanco brought him home with a two run shot. Here in the second Cruz with a two run single. It's six for Minnesota. Garver struck out back in the first. There's the spray chart so. He plays. To pull the baseball. And that's actually what his manager said he'd like to see use more of that right side of the field. He really hasn't gone the other way too much so far this season. On his third at bat yesterday Scott he hit a line drive hit the ball on the screws to Nolan in right field and. I remember Roy Smarley on the Twins broadcast that that was the first hard hit ball he's seen him hit to right field in two years and that's saying a lot and like you said Rocco was saying he just want him to get back to hitting not worrying about the home run just putting a good swing on something and hitting it hard and it doesn't have to be pulled. Yeah it's hard not to look back at that 2019 and think of the possibilities for the silver slugger winner at the catching position and also the plate appearance is only 359. Yet 31 home runs he had the best home run per at bat ratio in the big leagues that year. Edges will give that one a look it's fouled off it's two and two two down in the second. You know the other thing that Mitch Garver did well he had a You got it Jim. He had a nice swing at that pitch you know it was a little up but if that ball would have been a little bit down I, I have a feeling he would have really squared that ball up and that's that's the fine line of hitting right like it's up Latroy as you know then you get into a situation where now they'll throw a breaking ball but he had that fastball it was a little elevated but you know. Garver down on strikes but the twins add two more it's six nothing middle of the second in Cleveland. Now two down for Jose Ramirez and it swung out and hammered to deep right way out of here number six for Jose Ramirez. Fran Mill Reyes has been getting locked in over the last eight games hitting 355. And it swung on, hit high, hit deep to left, way, way out of here. Oh my! Three quarters of the way up the bleachers. We are tied at two. 
Reyes swings and hits it. Deep to left. Forget about it. Another rocket. And Reyes has his second home run tonight. As he faces Buxton with a two-run lead, 5-3 in the eighth inning, base is empty. Buxton swings and launches high and deep to left field. Back it goes, deep it goes, and gone. Number seven for Buxton makes this a one-run game. Now the set, now the 0-2 pitch. Swing and a miss. Wiped him out with a high heat ball game. Six nothing twins. The MLB game of the week, live on YouTube, is presented by Google Pixel. And adding to this unique viewing experience, don't forget to check out YouTube's live game commentary featuring MLB, the Twins account, the Indians channel, and a select group of YouTube creators. You can view the live game commentary on your computer, your mobile device, or your smart TV. We're going to keep an eye on the discussion throughout the broadcast. We'll start to bring in some of those creators. Like, I'll start with Sports Gaming Universe, who's saying hello to both Jim and Latroy. He says, Jim, your home run that hit the flagpole at Target Field during your run with the Twins is still one of the most impressive things I have ever witnessed. And he has a note for Latroy as Jay Happ misses up to Eddie Rosario. He says to you, Latroy, I remember watching Latroy breaking in as a rookie back in the day with the Twins at the Metrodome. My friends and I all were on the Latroy for Rookie of the Year bandwagon. Rosario skies <laughs> that one. <laughs> Donaldson calls for it and records the out. Latroy, there was a fan club that started, what, back in 2000, I believe, with the Twins? Yes. And his yes, the fan club uh, started by a uh, couple fans that were standing outside in the rain, and I was actually the only player to stop and sign in the rain. And Eric England is the president. He decided he was going to start the LHFC, and there's over a thousand members, and there's a core of about 35 to 40 that I keep in regular contact with. How cool is that? Grab a lunch maybe with someone every once in a while, reminisce? Do lunches, dinners. Um, they've actually, you know, babysat my daughter. Um, you know, had a family out in um, Hastings, Minnesota, the Weber family. I let their son, Eric Weber, drive my, my car to the prom. And then I was <laughs> the best man in his wedding a few years later. <laughs> that is really neat. There's Rosario going the other way, and it's gone. Ahmed Rosario on an 0-2 pitch has teed off, and the Indians are on the board. Rosario's second home run of the season comes off half. Cleveland breaks the ice. Another beautiful swing, fellas. That ball must be uh, must be going out to right field at a good uh, at a good pace today. You know, the ball seems to be jumping that way. So it's what a nice, beautiful swing. Stayed on it. And uh, and shot it out to right field. I like to see hitters stay on that fastball because that's the only way you can drive that ball to right field. As soon as that front hit op hip opens up, and they get in pull mode, that's a lazy fly ball. That one's on the ground into the shift. And Josh Naylor is retired. But when it comes to progressive field, if you like going to right, this is one of the better ballparks to tee off in all of Major League Baseball. Hey, Scott, what was the home always, run probability on that ball? Been, Scotty. <laughs> it's a home run in 17 parks. There you go. 45% hit probability. <laughs> so that one a little more likely than what we saw from Buxton in the first. Now it's Yu Chang. Hap has done everything that I talked about 
I mean, his keys to success. He's pitched ahead in the count. Uh, he, that home run was an 0 2 home run. You don't like to give up those much, but it wasn't a bad pitch. It was just a better swing. But he looks like he's in, in control right now. And the Twins could use the assistance. Their bullpen has had a tough go lately. Alex Colome, their closer, their offseason signing. Has been pushed down to lower leverage situations. We saw that yesterday. He struggled again. There's Hap's fastball usage among starting pitchers. 81%. He's even above Lance Lynn these days. That's pretty impressive, especially in the era of baseball that we, we're currently in. You know, it's almost 50 50 with breaking balls to fastballs, and he's doing it with just his fastball. Polanco cleans that up, sits down Yu Chang, and Jay Happ gives up the home run to Med Rosario. That's okay. Bomba Squad providing plenty of pop on the Minnesota side today. After two, twin six, Indians one. Canna leads off, check swing, ground ball, gets by Maeda. It's rolling out to second base, Arise bare hands and throws him out. Arise skillfully making that play. As Donaldson hammers one to left field and deep, back it goes, deep it goes and gone. Donaldson first pitch ready, a home run to left, his first of the season, and the Twins take a 1-0 lead. Swinging a drive left field and deep. Beck it goes. Deep it goes and gone. Twins take the lead on a 3 2 hanger to Nelson Cruz. A two run shot. 4 3 Twins in the third. And now a blast to left center field. Buxton with a diving catch in center. Oh, what a catch by Byron Buxton. Preserving the lead. A tremendous catch by Buxton to keep the Twins up 10 to 9. Walla to left field and gone a home run. Ostadio's first of the year and the Twins take the first lead. Throw me a high fastball and I'm swinging anyway and tried to go up the stairs and he just clubbed it. Ready for the third inning in Cleveland. Twins up 6-1. And new to the MLB Game of the Week for the 2021 season is the YouTube Player of the Game. Fans watching on mobile devices and computers can vote for which player will receive the trophy. Yes, the trophy is in Cleveland, waiting to be handed out during the post-game show. Stay tuned for the Player of the Game polling options later in the show. So you'll have a chance to contribute and hand a trophy over to, it could be maybe Buxton, Donaldson, Polanco. They all have homers so far today. And let's wrap up our first poll on YouTube. How many more no-hitters will we see this season? And the winner is three plus. So, Latroy, you, you kind of helped sway the crowd a yes. little bit with the volume. Well, I, the, it's one of those situations where, as we can see the way the game is, the Pitching is a lot more advanced in the hitting part when it comes to analytics. And, you know, the baseball, the pitching guys understand, you know, what they need to do with the carry, you know, how they want the breaking ball shape and things like that. And that's going to help the pitchers be a little bit more advanced in the hitters. We hadn't figured out that hitting aspect yet. Excuse me, swing leads to a ground ball out. Brent Rooker is retired. And Williams Astudio is coming up. Well, we're going to speak to one of the fine pitchers in Major League Baseball in the next half inning. Jose Barrios will join us from Cleveland. We'll have a chat, so YouTube creators, you know what to do. Load up your questions right now for Jose Barrios. We'll ask some of them live during the game. As to Dio, pulls that one down the line, and it's gone. La Tortuga goes long. It's the fourth home run of the day for the Twins. We're only in the third. Astudio's second of the season. Make it 7-1 Minnesota. Beautiful swing, Scotty. Breaking ball here and stayed right on it. And again, you know, what a nice level, beautiful swing. 
came down to the ball nice. I've thrown batting practice to Asadio a few times over the last couple of years, and there's not a pitch that he doesn't like. He's going to swing at everything. And pitches down in his own, he can really tattoo. Simmons thought he fouled that off. No, it's in fair ground. It's for Naylor. Two down. Astudio with his 10th you know, career home run. Now a for the Twins. You got it, Jim. Number 19, Alex no, sometimes what happens, thanks, Scotty. Sorry. We sometimes. You know, when you're throwing BP like that, Latroy, to a guy and they're in swing mode, you know, they always say, how do you get out of a slump? Sometimes it's being aggressive and swinging the bat, you know, and and I think that's the case with this kid, you know, because when, when they will go through a bad time, to be in swing mode can get you out of that quickly by, by putting the ball in play and just making good things happen. And he's so valuable to the team because he plays multiple multiple positions and with you know injuries and guys being on the COVID list now he's been able to play some third base some left field some first base some second base and he's even he, he he also catches so he's made himself very valuable in this era of play It's a good fastball, just just tattooed down in the zone. And Addis Kirloff is one of the top prospects in the Twins organization. His, the kid is going to be, he's going to hit at the major league level. His, his, his bat skills, ball to bat skills are, are off the charts. I'm saying it while he strikes out. <laughs> That's okay. There's been a lot of loud contact <laughs> from his bat, even though it's often found a glove. Former first round pick, top 25 overall prospect in the sport. Astudio joins the home run party. It's 7 1. Sam Hentges, the pride of Boundsview High School. Swing and a miss. There's the breaking ball. Nice curve to get Adam Eaton for out number one. So he gets a swing and miss and strikes out his first major league hitter. My goodness. Another bullet, but this one is turned into a double play. That ball was hit so hard, Brett Gardner couldn't even freeze. Well, it was, yeah, right at you. Perfect. That's what you were looking for, a line drive. Oh, boy, hammer. Deep left center field, and it's going to one-hop the fence. Backing it up is Gardner. Fran Mill around second. Uh-oh, he's going to go for three. Here's the throw. The big man goes in safe. Hammer, high in the air, deep left field, Vaughn's back, he's looking up, gone to Souvenir City! Jordan Luplo gets the Indians on the board. High fly ball, right field, deep, go. judges back, he's out of room, and it's out of here! Fred Mill Reyes, and the Indians come right back and take the lead. Four home runs this afternoon from Minnesota. We're in the last of the third, and another poll question to bring to the mix. La Tortuga, Williams Estudio homered in the last half. So which current player has the best nickname? You got to go off the board here, and we gave you some good options. Pete Alonzo, Polar Bear, Tortuga, you're looking at him. Fran Mil Reyes in this game on the Cleveland side. Franimal and Juan Soto, Childish Bambino. So some great options. We'll give you our selections a little bit later on as well as Jay Happ gets ready to go in his third inning against 9-1-2 and two for Cleveland. It starts with Austin Hedges. And time to bring in our guest today. Jose Barrios joins us from the dugout. Jose, great to see you. I'll also let everyone know in the chat, YouTube creators, team accounts, if you have questions for Jose, let us know. Jose, good afternoon. Good to see you. How are you doing today? Good afternoon, guys. Thank you for having me today. I'm fine. How are you guys? We're great. And you know what? I'm going to have you start us off with an answer to the poll question. I just asked everyone, best nickname 
in Major League Baseball, can you go off of one of the options, or I'll let you go off the board as well because you're joining us. What do you think? Best nickname in the game? Oh, we got we got a uh, you know few of they are good. You know, I like mine <laughs> myself, but you know, I enjoy much when when the people call a studio like La Tortuga because me like you know he's run slow but at the same time he's funny so we enjoy when we heard that that nickname well your nickname is la machina the machine where did that come from yeah that's come from my trainer because the way i work out you know out of the field and uh, that's why they call me like that <laughs> hola papi como estas brillos hey saludos me usted <laughs> it's Latroy. How are you? Hey, Latroy, Papa. Hey, who are you, man? Hey, I'm doing Tommy great. Say hi to you. So, tell Tommy I said hello. <laughs> so, Brios, what hello, what man. has been uh, the reason? What has been the reason for your great start so far in the 2021 season? Ah, uh, you know, I'm glad to you know to have that opportunity. Obviously, I've been working. To, to be where we are right now but we know we got more you know road to come so we want to keep working on that but right now i think my my mentally my mindset every every day every outing and obviously you know so what i've been doing so far what i have what i what kind of adjustment i have to do to getting better so that kind of stuff that's that's it. i think it's be helped me to through this you know beginning of the season Hi, Jose. Jim Tomey here. Congratulations. You've become hey, such an elite pitcher in the game. Uh, is there anything, is there anything on the four days off that you've been doing to maintain this such an elite level, uh, you know, moving forward in your career? Yeah, I've been learning from, you know, for the veteran guys. They always got a routine, so... I've been working on that to, to create my one. So, yeah, every day got a purpose on me. You know, today this is like a, this is my day two because I threw two days, two days ago already, but we got an off day. So we got to figure out and make an adjustment when we got an off day, you know, another extra day. But, yeah, every day got a purpose. Today, we you know, we we came to the ballpark. Today I throw a long toss. Then I do my my, my weight room. So, yeah, trying to... to to work like uh, if we're gonna pitch, you know, with the with the same mindset, like with the, give the hundred percent, and yeah, trying to you know work hard, but at the same time, be healthy and fresh for the for the next day and next hour. We're hanging out with Jose Barrios to a worldwide audience on YouTube. It's a ball and two strikes to Cleveland leadoff hitter Cesar Hernandez. Twins up seven one, and we'll bring in some of those. YouTube creator questions. Actually, Mr. Spotlight today, Zach Campbell, joined us on the pregame, and he has a question for you, Jose. He says, what was it like pitching in an MLB game in Puerto Rico? I was there, and it was great to see you. That one to uh, short. For me Simmons day, handles it. So, you know, for me, that day was special. Obviously, I pitched in you know, my country, from my family, friend, uh, you know, all that people, but at the same time, I enjoyed, you know, the time I spent there with my teammate, for, with, you know, with the twin staff, you know, my teammate, uh, all that people. So I think that that's, that's the most, the big thing for me. You know, I got, I, I'm going to take that in my, you know, for my, how you say, my, um, uh, for the rest of my, my career in baseball, the, the way my teammate and the people from Minnesota enjoy those, those days in Puerto Rico. Yeah, that was a big bucket list moment, and you were fantastic. Yeah. It was awesome to watch. Here's one from Austin Kleschka. Jose, who was your favorite ball player to watch growing up? Oh, so, yeah, when I grew up, I liked to be a catcher, but my dad don't let me catch it because I was too too short and skinny, so he take care of me. You know, he, he carried, don't, don't, anybody, don't, don't let anybody hit me, so my favorite uh, player was Ivan Rodriguez, the posh. Awesome, I love it. <laughs> Here's one from Made the Cut. As the 2 0 offering with two outs here in the bottom of the third is coming up to Jordan Luplo from J Hap. And that's fouled back. So Made the Cut says, Hey Jose, which of your pitching mates 
could play a position outside of pitcher the best, and what position would it be? So out of your fellow pitching teammates, could any of them play a number of positions like your buddy Luis Arise, who's sitting right near you, can play all over the diamond? Yeah, this guy can play everywhere in the, in the field. So, yeah, we got plenty, plenty athletes. You know, we got, you know, our pitchers, they are athletes, so I think we can play anywhere around the field. So that we got, we got the opportunity. Luplo flies and out. Me? I, I like to be played <laughs> yeah. shortstop. Yeah, <laughs> we want to see it. Shortstop, maybe even some catcher after your career. You're too good at pitching, Jose. It's great to talk to you. Thanks for yeah. joining us today. Thank you, guys. God bless you. We appreciate it. Jose Barrios, my great luego, guy. Papi. <laughs> see you, Luis. Twins up 7-1 after three on YouTube. Just smokes it. Forget about it. Oh, my goodness. Great baseball right there. And that one's going to go. That ball was crushed. And this is going to do it. Up oh, my. Strike three. That was a great play. I talked about his fielding skills. That was remarkable. We're in the fourth, and Cleveland's about to send in their third pitcher of the game already because Byron Buxton and company are putting on a show. StatCast powered by Google Cloud. Well, Buxton left the yard in his first at bat, and then look at this just seeing eye double that he produced in at bat number two in the second inning, showing off the elite hard hitting contact, the top of the line speed and oh he's also a gold glove defender out in center he's the seventh fastest in terms of sprint speed in the american league just shy of 29 feet per second that is blazing speed he can do it all and he goes after the first pitch and he finds open space on the right side jp morosi what else can you add to the vibrant display of skills that byron buxton brings to the table every day well, Scott, first of all, it's the fourth inning, and Buxton is now a triple shy of the cycle, a developing story here, to say the very least. Uh, I loved a recent column written by Jim Suhan of the Minneapolis Star Tribune in which Jim said a couple things. Number one, Buxton's upside looks something like the Sistine Chapel, one of my favorite lines ever that I've read. And also, Latroy, Jim Suhan says that Buxton could be the most exciting twin since your former teammate, Kirby Puckett. Your thoughts, LaTroy? Jim Suhan and I go way back together, 25 years. But we there is a center fielder that's in between Puckett and Buxton, and his, go, his name is Torrey Hunter. So we have to throw Torrey in the mix because Torrey was absolutely exciting out there. He wasn't as fast as Buxton, but the jumps that he got on baseballs hit in center field, he made up for a speed with his ability to get great jumps. And Latroy, I'm going to perhaps blow your mind here. Sam Henkis is the new pitcher in for Cleveland. He's a Twins fan growing up. Yes, the pitcher on the mound. And his favorite player was Torrey Hunter. What is he, about six foot ten? <laughs> He's got some serious height. Made his MLB debut Those on legs. April 20th. A lot of legs coming at you. 
Two and two thirds innings so far this season. Four strikeouts. Fourth round pick by Cleveland in 2014 out of Mounds View High School in Minnesota. Listed at 6'6, Latroy. He looks 6'10, you're right, when you're watching him on the screen. Well, that's a lot of legs and a lot of arms coming at a hitter from the from the left side. I'm sure he has a lot of deception and the ball's getting on top of you very fast. You know, tell me how did you like <laughs> or didn't like to face lefties like this? I, I did not like to face guys this tall, especially left handed. Uh, you know, it was just uncomfortable. You know, Latroy, you know, Randy Johnson, who threw very hard. You know, it's just, they're just uncomfortable at bats. You don't feel, unless they're straight over the top, you know, if they have any, if that arm drops a little bit, it's a tough at bat on a left hander. And the size, the size here definitely stands out for me. He gets the double play ball that he needs. Josh Donaldson bounces into two. There was plenty of time to toss to second. Let's see Donaldson not moving too fast over to first. Two outs for Nelson Cruz. Jim, are you okay with that? I mean, this is a 35-year-old fiery guy, plays hard. Wasn't making too much movement over to first base, though, on that ground ball. Well, I always ask this, you know, you never know what a guy's dealing with injury-wise, you know. And, and the first question, Latroy and Scotty, I like to ask is, have you dealt with injuries? Are your lower extremities, your calf, your hammy, are they bothering you? And then what I ask is, look, if you're – if you're 60 or you run, you can run 70%, give me 70 of your best 70%. You know, meaning, you know, look, look, I know that he's come back from injuries, so I don't really want to comment and not really know at the end of the day because this, you know, Donaldson has played really hard over his career, and he's been a fabulous player. So I... I always like to know the information. And look, if a guy's 100%, give me, give me, give me your, give me, give me 95 to 100%. But I always, I always, uh, I always want to know and see what a guy's dealing with. That's fair. He's coming off a right hamstring strain about a week, 10 days right. off the IL at this point. Nelson Cruz, by the way, off the bat, that was 109 miles an hour. Just muscles it into center field and creates another opportunity here for the Twins with two outs. And Jorge Polanco with a home run in his pocket from the first inning. Scott and Jim, I want to go back to the Donaldson. You know what, what Donaldson told me? He's had so many lower extremity issues with his calf and what Scott mentioned, the hamstring. He hurt the hamstring on his first at bat uh, this year on a double in between first and second base. So in a situation like that, a hard hit ball, you know, I don't mind him taking that, taking that, that particular, you know, run from home to first off. I don't, I don't mind yes. it because he's had some issues with his lower extremities. And he's worked very hard to get back, you know, get back to where he is today. And I'm sure you don't want to, you know, set himself back uh, with trying to beat out a, you know, a hard ball that's, that's really going to be a 5-4-3 a double play. And it's the Robinson Cano discussion years no back doubt. sometimes when, you know, it would seem like he's not in a hurry on the base paths, but he would put together a full season of work almost every year, showing us a lot of durability. That one looks like it hurts for Jorge Polanco. That also goes back to Machado, the statement that he made before, you know, when he was a free agent, he got crucified about it, you know, not running hard to first base, but it's not, you can't do it every day. Like you said, we don't know what, a lot of times you don't know what a person, you know, how his body is feeling. And you save that energy for when you hit one in the gap, that might be a single, but if you really push it, it could be a double. You save that energy 
for that at bat where you can get to second base. Polanco lays off. So that previous pitch, Jim, was off the right thigh. I mean, if he's doing any squats this week, he's really going to feel it. <laughs> yeah, there's no doubt. I mean, that's the little things of baseball that as you as you play this game and foul balls or you know what catchers go through or what middle infielders go through like it all adds up and that's why that's why like like Latroy you can attest this like as a as an ex player you really respect how these guys go out and they play you know I'm sure all of them are starting to get the little dings here and there that they're going to have as this long grind approaches and it's you know it's it's the mentally tough ones you know they 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 survive in the end Sam Henkis with a little paint to get out of the frame unscathed it's 7-1 Minnesota middle of the fourth as we head to break we take a closer look at Tristan McKenzie in this MLBPA infield chatter feature watch this Remember this video. Go to Mac. Because we'll come back to it in a moment. But first, we have to tell the story of this friend. He sent me a cool photo from up there with him uh, facing the field. This is Tristan McKenzie. On August 22nd, he made his major league debut. Six innings, one run, 10 strikeouts. I think Tristan and I became such good friends because he's a really outgoing guy. And this is Nolan Jones, Cleveland's number one prospect. Last winter, Jones was rehabbing in Arizona. So was McKenzie. I've seen how hard he's worked the past couple of years. Uh, he's battled some injuries, and I was super excited when he got the call and knew I couldn't miss it. Which brings us back to the video. Go to Mac. One friend on the mound at Progressive Field in Cleveland, the other across the street atop a parking garage, determined to be there even though he wasn't allowed in. I definitely had my spot picked out and knew where I was going to be uh, at 7 o'clock for Tristan's debut. The fact that you got to be up there was really cool. The picture he sent me is really cool, too. That's the guy I know 100%. Real, real kind-hearted kid. Four homers for the Twins today in a 7-1 lead in the fourth. Each week this season on our broadcast, we will focus on a YouTube content creator featured in our live game commentary section. Today, our creator spotlight shines on Zach Hample. Zach's channel features him exploring ballparks all over the country, interacting with players, and providing tips for fans on how to snag baseballs at a game. You are seeing that correctly. Over 11,000 baseballs caught by Zach around major league ballparks. That's an incredible number. If you had told me over 100, I would have said that's a lot. Over 11,000 is why he has a YouTube channel that is so successful and he's able to provide tips. We heard from him earlier, Zach. If you're in the chat right now, say hello. If you have a question for Jim or Latroy or anything else, give us something good. He caught Alex Rodriguez's 3,000th hit. He caught Mike Trout's first career home run. He's got some pretty valuable memorabilia. Uh, three misses from Jay Happ here to start the bottom of the fourth against Jose Ramirez. Can you imagine, Jim, catching over 11,000 baseballs around a ballpark? I think, I think I'd be tired after 100 if I did that for a year. There's no doubt about it. You know, it's, you got that right for sure. There's a science to it, Latroy, where he knows the perfect spots where foul balls will often end up and home runs as well. It could be right there. This guy's just chilling. He's not going to move. He hope it lands <laughs> right in the lap. <laughs> He's going to need it to hit him in the belly. Jose Ramirez going for it, but it's fouled. Now Zach Hample suffered a spill going for a foul ball recently i remember watching this live this was about a week ago april 19th that's zach watch wait for it does not stick the landing <laughs> that's gonna lock serious views on youtube 
I mean, I don't think most people really understand like the dedication that he has to to go around the country to different ballparks to be able to catch those balls. That takes dedication, a lot of dedication. It's a full time job. He's been to, I think, over 60 parks because obviously we have moved on to some newer ballparks over the years. And that's Rooker camping under it. There's one down. Jose Ramirez is retired. Fran Mill Reyes coming up. Franimal. All right, so which current player has the best nickname? And La Tortuga wins this show. 47% in favor of Tortuga. I like Franimal too. He checks in at 14. Polar Bear picking up 21% of the pie. Okay, your turn, Jim Tomey. Favorite of these four. I, I like Franimal. Franimal just seems like, like he's just going to hurt a baseball. And look at him. Look at how big he is. And I just, I love that nickname. You know, it, it matches him perfectly. What, do you, what about you, Latroy? I'm a fan of La Tortuga, the turtle. And that's a good one, and he's full of personality. It fits, <laughs> it, I suppose it fits him perfect. If anybody, you know his personality. He's just the guy on the team that he's always laughing, always having a good time, and he's making sure anybody else who's in his presence is having a good time as well. Yeah, he puts on a show, rarely strikes out. Fran Mil Reyes has been putting on a show of his own. Three hits, two home runs yesterday, both coming off of Kent and Maeda. He has four homers in his last six entering today. His team needs some help. They trail by six runs. Two outs, bottom of the fourth. Scott Braun, Jim Tomey, Latroy Hawkins, J.P. Morosi. We are pumped to be joining you, a global audience with us today on YouTube. Eddie Rosario, the former Twins left fielder for the last five years, was not tendered and signed with the Cleveland Ball Club. And when you get traded or signed with a, a in in division rival, you know there's a lot of you know a, a lot of uh, built up anger. I'm sure that you want to do so well against your former team. Yeah, he described it, I think, in a more kind way by saying it's like going up against or seeing your, your ex for the first time, Latroy. You want to be well-dressed. <laughs> you want to have your best day and show them what they're missing. Yeah, I'm sure he's, he's waiting to go deep so he can do a somersault, flip his bat in the dugout. I'm sure he would do all those things. And this is another guy, Jim, who – swings at just about anything and sometimes to his disadvantage his pitchers often work outside of the zone against Rosario but he's been in the league for a while do you think that's something that can develop even for a player that's this late into his career or it might change his game too much uh, uh, no you know I do I think I think he can develop like you watch that the two swings that he swung there they were out over the plate sliders and his his backside is kind of falling away. Hopefully he'll make that adjustment as he gets more experience. He's 0 for 2 today. Cleveland down by 6 after 4, live on YouTube. Welcome to game one of the 88th World Series. This ball is going to go. Here comes Justice. It'll be a play. Save! And Atlanta wins it. The Braves win 2-2. They were tied two games to play. They win the game 14-5. Chase by Puckett. He caught it. Leaps in the air and makes the catch. In the deep left center. And we'll see you tomorrow night. matchup to John Smoltz and Jack Morris. Pet the bucket. Got him swinging. Jack Morris delivers. Justice swings and misses. Down he goes. And five full innings of play. Atlanta nothing. Minnesota nothing. 3-2 Cleveland.
pitch is strike three, four. Going to the bottom of the 10th inning. No score. The Twins are going to win the World Series. It's a one nothing 10 inning victory. We've reached the fifth, Twins seven, Cleveland one. Nelson Cruz has reached base in all three plate appearances today, and he's also providing a little verbal assistance to our YouTube broadcast. I know something that you don't know. I know. I got the mic. I'm going to tell you. Polanco. What the hell, Polanco? What are you doing? I was almost on second base when he swung. Oh, he's safer, 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 safer. Yahoo! On you! Face! What a tortuga! What a tortuga. Mitch Garver blasts that baseball and it is gone. Wow. Wow. <laughs> on cue. I can't wait to hear what Nelson Cruz said on that one. You can see him celebrating again in the dugout. Garver, after two strikeouts, this time blasts off for his third of the season. It's a breaking ball, breaking down and in. Garver was able to get the barrel to that ball and hit it off the facing of the exit gate in progressive field and left field. Oh. That's a bomb, guys. In that ballpark, that's a <laughs> that's a bomb. We talked about we talked about he's gonna get hot. You watch. I mean, he's too good of a player, and something like that can just get you going from here on out. He's a what a talented hitter. I know he's not started off like he's wanted, but boy, that's nice to see him get a good swing like that. 413 feet off the bat of Mitch Garver and Latroy. Just to keep up with you here, that is a home run in any ballpark. Gobbled up by Ramirez, throws across for the first out. Now batting for the Twins, first baseman Wilkins Astadillo. This is a very special day for Cleveland's lefty Henkin. He's pitching against his hometown team. Facing some of the players he watched growing up, like Nelson Cruz. And now Tortuga coming off the home run in the third. We heard Cruz talk about that one now. We'll get the word from Nelson Cruz after the next pitch on Mitch Garver's smack. Here it is. Woohoo! On you! Face! We heat it up with the heat. It's getting hot, we get hot. <laughs> That's right. It's a great point, actually, Jim. I mean, you <laughs> hit in the Midwest for a long time as Astudia reaches for one and Rosario records the out. But it's cold in the Midwest in April, and the weather really heated up from yesterday's first pitch at about 82 degrees, and the Twins are heating up with it. You know, you play in Chicago, Minnesota, Cleveland. You can't wait for almost May to get here, especially that first 75 degree, 80 degree day. It kind of revives you, you know, and then and the ball starts carrying a little better as you get into May, June and throughout the summer. So I I know these guys are probably really excited to finally, finally get some good weather. Five homers today for the Twins. After three home runs in their previous four games, all losses. Donaldson with one of them. Buxton, Polanco, Garver, and Astudio. Nelson Cruz has to get involved. He's reached base all three times. Two hits and a single or and a walk. This one for Rosario on the move. And he makes the play. So three ground ground ball outs. But before that, 
Mitch Garver leading off the fifth with another one. No doubt about it. Twins up big in Cleveland. the bill of his cap, rubs his sleeves. And there's the fourth ball, and he struck him out. Payoff pitch from CC. Swung and it missed. Oh, he got him to chase a fastball away. CC with a career-high 13 strikeouts. Strike three called. He got him on three pitches. Good morning, good afternoon, good night. Got him. 11 strikeouts for Cliff Lee. Cliff Lee continues his march to a Cy Young. The nastiest guy I saw all year was Corey Kluber. Swung on and missed. Kluber strikes him out. The Cy Young winner in the AL, Corey Kluber. The American League Cy Young Award race was a runaway for Corey Kluber. It's a win for the second time in four years. Swing and a miss. Beaver just blew it right by him. Swing and a miss. Hey, he struck him out. 2020 American League Cy Young Award winner from the Cleveland Indians is Shane Beaver. <laughs> Shane Beaver. He got all 30 first place votes. Rosario, Naylor, and Chang do up for Cleveland in the home fifth and new to the MLB Game of the Week for 2021. It's the YouTube player of the game. So if you're watching, mobile device, computer, wherever you are, however you're watching, vote for the player who should receive the trophy during the post-game show. They'll hand them the trophy. We'll chat with that player after the game. So you get to decide. Get involved. Stay tuned for the player of the game polling options coming up in a few innings here on YouTube. Scott Braun, Jim Tomey, Latroy Hawkins, and J.P. Morosi is stationed in Cleveland. Ahmed Rosario with a home run in his first at-bat of the day back in the second. Jay Happ starting to get on a little run here. He has retired eight in a row, Latroy, and working with a nice advantage. He's given up just that one run. That's the only blemish Rosario gets to him. He is coming off. A lot of no-hit baseball against Pittsburgh. Rosario going the other way again, this time in fair ground, and he doesn't have it. Brent Rooker lined it up, but it's off the glove. Rosario's into second with a leadoff double. My man Rosario's the only guy that's trying to hit the ball to the opposite field. That was a great uh, attempt by Brent Rooker. As you can see, once he got into his slide, the ball was popped out his glove for a double by Ahmed Rosario. Yeah, he's had a nice day at the plate. And Jim Rooker was there. So the slide, the coverage, just off the glove. Yeah, he came, he came a long way. And it was a heck of a try, to be honest. You know, he went into that kind of gravel area out there, and uh, it was a good try going to try to get it. Rosario stayed on the ball nice, shot it the other way again. What a nice approach for him and his two at-bats today. Rosario also has a ton of speed, so a hit from Naylor could drive him home. Rosario and Andres Jimenez, the two major league players that come along in the deal for Francisco Lindor and Carlos Carrasco in the offseason from the New York Mets, along with two prospects. And strike down the pipe to Naylor. Tommy, I've seen a lot of games here at Progressive Field, and I, I can't remember ever seeing a ball hit off that that facing in left field. I've seen some hit in the, you know, up the bleachers, but I'll, I can't remember yeah. seeing one hit off the facing going out of the end exit. Polanco comes in yeah. and makes the play. 
yeah, Latroy, especially especially in fair territory. I've seen guys hit it right. foul, but never never even hit that. Like, you know, like it'll go where that light sign is right there, the Miller light light. I've seen them go under that, but never hit that facing. And I had always wondered, like, wow, would somebody ever clear that, which I've never seen in all my years in Cleveland there. I've seen Manny go way, way up where, you know, where Reyes went last night. And I've seen some long, I saw McGuire hit the scoreboard one night there, but nothing, nothing down the line like Garver did today. Pretty impressive shot. Nothing from Mike Napoli to that distance in his days. You know, I don't I don't know, Scotty. I not to my knowledge. I think we'd have to ask some of the Indians uh, Indians officials like if they've ever seen it. But I I don't remember, to be honest, ever a ball going off that facade or that facing. Well, this is your ballpark, Jim. 190 home runs at Progressive, more than any other Cleveland player. Well, I was I was per, I was fortunate. I had a lot of really good hitters around us there in the 90s, and it was so much fun playing. Well, we played the Twins, Latroy, and their and their club. There were the White Sox were in our division. They had some good offenses. And and I will say this, you know, success is what's around you as well. You look at the Twins today. It's contagious, you know, and when one guy goes, you can all go. And that's that's what I remember of our, you know, of our Cleveland teams there in the 90s that we just we played the game hard. And when guys would get on a roll and that weather would start heating up, we just loved to hit in this ballpark. I love the statue out there too. Hey, there's Sandy Alomar Jr., part of some very successful Cleveland ball, uh, Cleveland squads. And there's a pitch taken outside from Austin Hedges. So we just saw Yu Chang ground out and bring home Ahmed Rosario. It's 8 2. There's Sandy, longtime coach here. I can attest to that. Sandy, one of my favorite teammates you know, ever. What a good 90s. man. Love Sandy. Coming go ahead, the, go ahead, you know, Latroy. Sorry. Late 90s, when you guys had all those, when you guys had all those consecutive um, sellouts, and we couldn't get a win in this building. We couldn't get a win at Progressive. I don't care what the lead was going into the eighth and ninth inning. You know that energy from the fans in Cleveland always found a way to propel you guys over us. It was it was impressive and at the same time pretty intimidating. That one is hit deep to center, but Byron Buxton uses his hand to measure the wall, makes the catch. Loud fly ball out. Austin Hedges goes down. Cleveland does get a run and hey, no one did it better than this guy at Progressive Field. Jim Tomey with us today on YouTube. It's 8-2 Twins after five. First and third, the rookie Kepler can be the hero. 4 4 10th inning. Swing and a fly ball. Back it goes. It's gone. Max Kepler, his first major league homer, is a walk off. Two down. Kepler at the plate. Clobbered and crushed. And gone. Twins walk off the Astros on a Kepler line drive rocket to the porch and right. 3 3 tie. Bottom of the 17th inning. Fair ball down the line. Kepler does it. A walk off winner in 17 innings. Now it's up to Kepler. Two outs in the 6 6 game. And the pitch. A line drive. Left center field. That's going to land. Base hit. A walk off win. And it's Kepler delivering again. And the 0 1 is swinging a liner. Left field. Shallow. That ball sinking and down for a base hit. And he's around third. He scores, and the Twins walk it off 5-4 and 10. 1-0 -oh pitch, a swing, a liner, shallow center field, but it falls. Base hit, here comes Louie, and the Twins walk it off in 9-4-3. Well, that's the sixth time he's done that, so not an unfamiliar position for him.
all season long Major League Baseball will honor frontline and essential workers who continue to lift up their fellow citizens during the pandemic. Thank you frontline heroes. COVID-19 vaccines are safe and effective. Join the team and get the vaccine to help get us all get back to doing what we love together. Visit MLB.com slash COVID-19 resources for more information. That's the stage you're getting all set up for the NFL draft. JP, you're really busy out there in Cleveland, but I like your focus today, staying in the ballpark. But I know <laughs> there's also a lot of action around town out in Cleveland, Ohio. There is, and uh, let's hope that these foreboding skies hold off because uh, I'm seeing a bit more gray than I would like to see in the clouds here. Uh, let's hope the game continues. And Byron Buxton, as he comes up next, keeps chasing that history. Scott, I just keep thinking about how lucky we've been this month, whether it's Otani, Vlad Jr. with three homers last night, Tatis, Acuna, and of course here today, Buxton, how much young talent in the game today. You're right. I mean, superstars all with unique profiles. Byron Buxton brings the speed and the power and the defensive excellence. And he's guaranteed if this game keeps going, at least two more at bats. He's on deck. Alex Kirilov behind in the count one and two. I'm looking forward to Buxton having two more opportunities at hitting for the cycle. Well, let me ask you this, Jim. Would you rather have a cycle or a two-homer game? I'd rather go cycle, no doubt. I mean, <clears throat> you know, it's it depends, like, the, you know, the cycle you're getting four hits. So, you know, is it a two-hit homer game <laughs> or is it a cycle? <laughs> I mean, I'd rather have the hits at the end of the day. Kirilov down on strikes. So let's sum up the day so far for Buxton. First batter of the game, and he connects to the opposite field. Then this one gets by the infield, but it's Byron Buxton, so it's not a base hit. It's two bags. And then in the fourth, just your average single. I mean, so much speed. I think his feet almost move faster than what he's thinking sometimes. The quickness is just off the charts from the Twins leadoff batter who chases strike one. But you look at the last five cycles in Twins franchise history as Byron is just a triple away. Jorge Polanco pulled it off back in 2019 and then you'd have to go back a decade before that. My buddy Michael Kodair is on that list. Cuddy, one of my favorite teammates ever. Loved Michael. Played the game the right way. You know, just a great ambassador for the Twins organization as yourself. You know, Tori Hunter. I mean, there were so many, so many of you guys more know. Maurer, you guys played the game the right way. I was, I was there a very, very short period, but always, always really respected how that organization uh, brought all you guys up and how you guys grew into great young men. Buxton is going to pull off an infield single. He is not going to log the triple just yet, but wow, can he move. So once Hernandez had to stay back on that ball it was at to the point where he shouldn't have even thrown it because when the ball's hit on the ground Buxton's wide open because he's one of the few guys in the league that can beat out an infield ground ball and if it has to go deep he will beat it out tendonitis in the patella hamstring whatever he has going on he's still going to beat that ball out and <laughs> when you say tendonitis JP it gets me thinking about our conversation with Terry Francona this morning. What did he tell us? Well, Scott, uh, we were asking him about Byron and just what a dynamic player he is. And of course, he had a similar infield single last night. And there he goes again, by the way, stealing second base. Uh, and we asked Terry about Byron's athleticism. And he said, well, 
We saw him beat out a routine single to the left side yesterday, and I thought to myself, if he's got tendonitis, I want it. <laughs> and you see it there. No signs of tendonitis for Buxton today either. Give me that tendonitis and look at his stolen base percentage. I mean, 88% if you round up the five. That is best among active players with at least 50 stolen bags. Just an incredible toolsy ball player. Josh Donaldson fouls that one back. A ball and a strike to the Twins' number two hitter. Hard to tip your hat to Cleveland's pitcher, Henkin. He's came in and settled things down, giving his team opportunity to slowly, if they can, get themselves back into this game. Popped up. And it's playable for Yu Chang. Still, you look at the top two hitters in the lineup for Minnesota today. Or top three make that. Buxton, Donaldson, and Cruz. And they have reached in nine of 11 plate appearances. Creating traffic and a little bit of damage as well. Contributing to the eight runs. This lineup was... They've all had fabulous bats all day. No doubt about it. And the lineup was constructed to do just this. You know, Buxton bringing over Donaldson. We all know what we're going to get from Cruzy. Polanco's a very good hitter. He hadn't hit well so far this season. Looked like he's starting to come around. And having Garver and Astadio just adding to that. You know, they have a really, a, a really good solid lineup from one through nine. Just to, they have to continue to take really good at bats. And when a pitcher makes mistakes, they have to capitalize off those mistakes. There it is, your top three hitters in the order. Seven for eight, a couple homers. They've driven in four and scored five times. Buxton, Donaldson, Cruz. I'm sure that's what they were hoping for here on a day like today. You know, the weather's starting to heat up a little bit, get warmer. And the bats coming alive. And let's be real, Jim. It's time to go. I know it's April, and you can say, "Okay, deep breath." This team is seven and fifteen, but the Royals off to a surprising start. You know the White Sox are going to be difficult. Cleveland brings that excellent pitching, and a couple big boppers in Fran Mil Reyes and Jose Ramirez. I mean, if you fall too far behind in April, it can set you back for the entire season. And this is a team. That one back-to-back -back AL Central crowns as we see Nelson Cruz in the spray chart. He's going to pull the baseball more often than not. Yeah, there's no doubt. You don't, you know, you can't win a championship in April, but boy, you don't want to get, as you said, you don't want to get behind too much. You can lose games. You just don't want to, you don't want to be consistent and have streaky losses. You want to, you know, eliminate those quick. Yeah, the Twins trying to wipe away the bad losing taste they've had lately. Up big in the sixth. With the first selection, the Washington Nationals select Bryce Harper. A 19-year-old so-called phenom by the name of Bryce Harper has been called up by Washington, and he'll be in the starting lineup playing left field tonight. Coming to the plate, left fielder, number 34. Bryce Swing and a chopper back to the mound. Billingsley reached up to snare it. He'll throw to first to get a hustling Harper, and a career has begun. Swing and a line drive deep to center field. Going back camp, way back. It's over his head and off the base of the wall. The first big league hit for Bryce Harper is a double off the center field wall here at Dodger Stadium. He hits it to left and he hits it hard. Tagging is in keel. And the Nationals take the lead. Bryce Harper's first big league RBI, and he went on the attack on the first pitch. I mean, does it get any better than this? In the 
Welcome back to Progressive Field where Jay Happ looks very comfortable in his first start since last week's no hit bid. Jay Happ, 38 years young, was in demand last off season. The Angels, the Blue Jays, the Phillies all pursued him before he signed that one year deal with the Minnesota Twins. And when you think about longevity, we are very privileged to be joined today on the broadcast by two players, LaTroy and Jim. Both of you, of course, played until your age 42 season. And LaTroy, I wonder, your longevity as a native Midwesterner, Jay from Peru, Illinois, maybe there's a theme there about uh, playing multiple sports and keeping that arm fresh late into your career. Well, I definitely think uh, being a multi-sport athlete helps uh, athletes coming up just not relegated to you know doing one specific sport uh, muscle movement muscle memory and that's not you're just not using the same muscles you're using all your muscles for baseball basketball football running track and I and I didn't play a lot of baseball and I know that definitely helped me extend my career Hernandez bounces out one down in the bottom of the sixth he's put away by Polanco and let's bring in a little age 40 pole action who had the most impressive season at age 40 since 1960 nolan ryan in 87 dave winfield in 92 randy johnson in 2004 david ortiz big poppy most recently in 2016 vote now on youtube results a little bit later on and i will ask our friends here as well in just a moment jordan luplo number two hitter for cleveland Okay, pick one. Age 40 season. Who did it best out of that group, Latroy? What do you think? I'm going to go with my buddy and good friend, Big Poppy. This 2016 season at age 40 was, you know, the best I had seen at that time. He led the majors with a 1021 OPS, over 1,000 at age 40. And hey, I must say, Nelson Cruz looks like he is very capable of putting together numbers like that still. I think you can book Nelson Cruz for 40 plus homers for the next five years. It looks like if he keeps himself in that kind of shape with that kind of production that we've seen on a yearly basis. But you're right, that one's the most recent, 2016 from Big Poppy. And Nelson Cruz is providing that for Minnesota, Jim. I mean, he is an ageless wonder. His preparation is exemplary. It is, it is, and it's it's a testament to him on his conditioning and the fact that he's just, I think at the age of 40, you kind of know the game, what guys are doing to you. And, and I would say it's out, you know, getting into a good routine and, and understanding that routine every day what makes you successful and the days you have off right like <clears throat> excuse me off days are so valuable to recover and rest as you get into your uh, into your 40s and I think Nelson Cruz and and guys that reach that age do it very well so would that be your pick too Jim for the age 40 season that you've seen done best I mean 2016 most recently from David Ortiz or are you gonna go somewhere else on the board uh, I would say Ortiz that year was incredible and in what he did you know as an offensive player watching him was just just so much fun and I'm a big poppy fan so I uh, I just love everything about him he's how he represented the game and you know he's a good man he's a you know great to kids and you know another guy that really really took care of himself and and had some great years jose ramirez flies out to center field i will add this for everyone getting involved in the poll if you go with nolan ryan it's not a bad option he led the league in era and strikeouts that year in his age 40 season and he pitched six more seasons after that, by the way, too. <laughs> so if we do a poll for age 41, two, three, four, et cetera, Nolan Ryan would be on the list. <laughs> Scott Braun, Jim Tomey, Latroy Hawkins hanging with you on YouTube. And this is Fran Mill Reyes.
hitless today, but the batting average at a clean 300. Seven homers this season. He looks better than ever. Thirty-seven home runs back in 2019 for Fran Mill, 25 years old. And he went around, a ball and two strikes. Jim, do you see anyone in Fran Mill Reyes? It's okay if you don't, but is there anybody that either you played against or that we're watching in today's game that compares to Reyes who has done most of his work, his best work at home so far this season. Yeah, I mean, not not really because I think with him, the size stands out. There's not many humans like this that are this big. But and, and the thing that impresses me about that, when you look at his swing, it's very short and quick. You know, he'll hit the ball in. He can shoot the ball out to right center. But to do it at this size, you know, is impressive. You know, Big Big Poppy was this big. I don't know if he was this tall. And this kid's athletic. I'll bet you he could do a lot of things, you know, and, and be a good athlete. Yeah, I remember Cleveland fans think back to Richie Sexton was 6'7", Judge doing big things, Winfield's on our pole. After six, Twins up 8-2 in Cleveland. Bomber Squad. It's something that uh, we go around the club house. We got the shirts made. Bomber Squad. Bomber Squad for the BP. It's something fun we like to call ourselves, and it's something that, that keeps us going. So now let me get ready for a couple bombers later. Garber, a two homer night. Scope, a two homer night. Save some for tomorrow. Twins have tied an all time single game Twins record with eight home runs in one game. And now we know why they call them the Bomba Squad. Do it, Adam, baby! Bomba Squad. <laughs> I don't know where that came from, but definitely a good one. Three straight home runs from the middle of the Twins lineup. Five home runs for the Twins last night, and five more this afternoon. Grand slam, Byron Buxton! And now the Twins have indeed hit for the home run cycle. They have a solo home run, a two-run homer, a three-run homer, and a grand slam here tonight. <laughs> Max Kepler has three tonight. His second three-home run game in nine days. Gone! A walk-off for Sano! And the Twins win it! That ball is gone. And the team's 307. We're into the seventh. Twins have five home runs and eight total across the board today. And Cleveland with just two. Shane Bieber, last year's Cy Young winner, providing some audio for us today, which we appreciate. And we have more. You got anything self-incriminating you want to say? <laughs> you want to get, get some off your chest? Shee! Wiggity, wiggity, wiggity. <laughs> Is that thing on? <laughs> um, yeah, we won, we won big yesterday. MVP! My little brain can't handle all the handshakes. Hey, there's a ton of personality from Mr. Bieber. I love it. We appreciate the access he's providing today. And there's many ways you can go, Jim, but Shane Bieber choosing to tell some of his friends in the dugout that he's mic'd up, which also can provide some fun responses. Yeah, absolutely. Smart teammate. We used to, you know, you'd always <laughs> look on a, a guy's jersey and go, are you mic'd? Are you mic'd? And, you know, if they didn't tell you, we'd give them a little bit of a hard time. But that's a that's a good teammate, isn't it, LaTroy? Yes, it is a good teammate. Letting everybody know, hey, like you said, don't say anything self-incriminating. <laughs> <laughs> are you wearing a wire? <laughs> It's Polanco, Garber, and Rooker for Minnesota. I mentioned five long balls today from the Twins. Sam Henkes re returns to the mound for another inning of work here and delivers 94. That's fouled off by Jorge Polanco. 
StatCast powered by Google Cloud take us back to Polanco's first inning two-run blast. 106 miles an hour off the bat. A projected distance of 426 feet. The Twins picking on left field today at Progressive. And that one skips by Ramirez and Rosario. Polanco reaches here in the seventh. He hit him a changeup, Latroy. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering if you could give two errors right there. <laughs> <laughs> Ramirez is usually pretty sure-handed, and he made it possible yeah. to go through the, the five-hole with both guys right between the wickets. I've seen a baseball get past two ball players. I can't, off the top of my short memory, recall it going past two ball players through their legs specifically. That's probably a yeah, first. Well, I think, yeah, I I guess think we'll Ramirez. Living, we'll see something else. <laughs> yeah, I think Ramirez thought that ball was hit a little harder. And then, you know, and then the other one got through, got through. Maybe he got, you maybe couldn't see it, you know, who knows? Rosario, who's splitting his time between shortstop and center field this year. Mitch Garver homered in his last trip to the plate. Garver also doing a really nice job catching Jay Happ this afternoon. And what gets overlooked about his 2019 31 homer season is the fact that he made significant strides behind the plate. He is one of the best pitch framers in Major League Baseball. Catching strikes that are just on the edge of the zone and sticking them with the glove and making sure that his starting pitcher or reliever gets the call. Yeah, Gar Garber has definitely worked very hard Worked very hard at, you know, being a better catcher, framing. His presentation has gotten way better. And him calling a game has gotten better also. And him blasting home runs looks really good today. Mitch Garver, circa 2019. There he goes again. It's a two-home run performance, doubling his total on the season to four. And the Twins have a double-digit run day. Garber is very good against left-hand pitching. He's been outstanding today against him. Hopefully this starts a trend where he can get back to driving the ball off of left-handers. What a night. Yeah. What a nice short swing. And, you know, we talked earlier, you know, like, look, look, if you can get through April, and and I mean nobody wants to struggle, but you know I, I'm a big believer that a guy is who he is, you know. And Garver, look, he's got tremendous power, you know. And it only takes one good swing. I I, I think the first homer kind of relaxed him and put him in a position. Now he can go up there and dial in on an area, and he obviously did that in this second home run, and. Uh, Nicely done, Jim. Yes, yeah, sixth career multi-homer game for Garver. First since that big 2019 that he had. Pitching changed. Twins up 10-2. Fans are very important for us. Fans are everything. You want to play for those people. That's one of the biggest part of the game when you have fans because of the adrenaline. They give us the extra booze kind of get nervous and, and some chills thinking about it right now i grew up being being a fan when i when i was a kid the cheers when we're doing well the booze when we're not doing well hearing a cheer for a strikeout that, that's going to be uh almost like a brand new feeling again and when i see the fans my energy is kind of like crazy and even the smell of hot dogs and stuff the whole atmosphere is just what we needed it's a great day today the players the staff everyone here with the twins could not be any happier to welcome you back to target field 
10,000 fans are going to feel like 40,000. It's, it's going to be a very special moment for us. You can go behind the scenes, watch exclusive interviews, and learn more about your favorite players on the Minnesota Twins YouTube channel. Head to youtube.com slash twins and follow the Twins today. If you're following the Twins bats today, well, you've been happy. Ten runs, homer after homer. Six total now. Franchise record is eight. They've got a shot. Brent Rooker batting against the new man on the mound. Nick Whitgren, welcome back to the Big League Ball Club. Whitgren activated from the paternity list today. Him and his wife, Ashley, welcomed their second child, a son named Camden, on Monday. Congratulations to Nick. He also turns 30 years old tomorrow, going up against Rooker, who is hitless so far this afternoon. Scott Braun, Jim Tomey, Latroy Hawkins, and J.P. Morosi is at the ballpark today. And that pitch misses wide. Did LaTroy or Jim, I feel like the answer will be yes because you played for so long and I know you have children. Did either of you spend time on the paternity list while you were a player? Uh, I'll start with you, LaTroy. They didn't have the paternity list when Jim and I were playing the game. <laughs> you had to run home, see, <laughs> see your kid, and then get back to the game. <laughs> and I, my daughter was born in... August the 16th, 01, and we were actually in Cleveland at the time. I remember flying from Cleveland to Dallas, spending a day and a half there and getting right back to Cleveland to finish the series. For me, for me, my kids are November and December, so I, I, uh, I did not have to have to leave the ballpark and go, so. I was, uh, we had, we had off season babies. You timed it well, Jim. Brent Rooker strikes yes. out and one down in the seventh. Estudio coming up against Whitgren. And here's the strikeout pitch. Let's send it to JP. Latroy, now four years ago yesterday, speaking of sons who have played sports i believe the son of one of your former teammates was drafted 10th overall in the nfl draft i understand latroy you had tried to convince him to play baseball at one point but he chose football how did that turn out latroy that's not true i didn't convince him to play <laughs> baseball we, we <laughs> no 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 uh, we just told him hey you make the decision what sports you want to be you want to play because he was obviously good at you know baseball football and I thought he was actually a better basketball player than, than the other two sports but you know he told us what he wanted to play and you know what me his dad and his mom fully supported it and it was actually yesterday on Facebook sent me a reminder that it had been four years since the draft talking about Pat Mahomes superstar with the Kansas City Chiefs Latroy playing with his father and very timely with the NFL draft being held in Cleveland this weekend. The Vikings received the 14th pick this year, and the Browns will pick at number 26. And JP will not be staying out there for the draft, even though he can cover pretty much anything. JP, we need you for another game, I think. <laughs> Heading to Atlanta tomorrow, showcase game. Can't wait. And that'll be on MLB Network. Today on YouTube, 10 runs for the Twins. Hey, if you like power, Bomba Squad is putting on a show. As to Dio with one of them, his second of the season came back in the third. This is wild as As to Dio sends one to shallow center, racing in his loop low for the catch. Ready for this stat? Especially, okay, so Jim, you were a man who knew how to take a walk back in your day. Williams As to Dio has 10 career home runs in 113 games. He has seven career walks 
more homers than walks. The man knows how to make contact, and he's just not into watching pitches. No, no, and you know what? And that's okay. You know, like there are guys that are aggressive and want to hit. I, I always say this: when you leave the on deck circle, the goal is to I'm going to be ready to hit. And there's just certain guys that have a great gift, and he's one of them. You know, I mean, what what where this is really valuable is you get a guy on third base less than two outs, and when he comes up. He's going to put the ball in play and more than likely get an RBI and a run scored for their team. So I there, there's there's the there's the positive side of putting the ball in play and uh, and he's one of them for sure. And you think about Max Muncy of the Los Angeles Dodgers just in the past week five games. He has walked 12 times it's five more than as Dio in the past few years in over 100 games. For La Tortuga. And to piggyback with what Tommy was saying, like, he doesn't strike out that often as well. He doesn't strike out, he doesn't walk, and he's putting the ball in play. Just 16 career strikeouts, that's what you love. A guy who makes contact, puts the ball in play, like his fellow teammate, Luis Arise. Think about David Fletcher of the Angels, who also has a similar skill set of not swinging and missing very often. Michael Brantley's been doing it for many years, former Cleveland player. We need more Tortugas in the game today. Fun to watch. There's no doubt the kid enjoys playing the game, that. and that's so refreshing. Simmons to the right side. Ground ball out will do it for the seventh. Mitch Garver has not one, but two home runs. And I think one of them actually made it to the NFL draft party out there in Cleveland. Let's stretch. The Red Sox have taken two of the first three games in this series here in Cleveland. There's a ball laced to left. Three nothing Cleveland. And Cleveland wins it 13 to 6. What a weekend for the tribe. They sweep Kansas City and shut them out all three times. Ten in a row. For the first time in the long history of the Cleveland Indians, they have a 15 game winning streak. They've won 20 straight games. One out away from making history. It's over. 21 in a row. The Cleveland Indians have set a new American League record. He can't make the catch. Coming around third with the tie run is Gonzalez. The Indians have tied it down to their last strike in the bottom of the ninth. A swing and a drive to deep right down the line. Base hit. It's a game winner for Jay Bruce. And history marches on. Google Cloud is helping to power StatCast with mass, massive amounts of data points to reveal new insights, taking you deeper into the game than ever before. Google Cloud is the official cloud technology of Major League Baseball, and they help us out with StatCast, powered by Google Cloud. This is unique because Eddie Rosario loves pitches out of the zone. We took all the baseballs out of the strike zone that he has turned into Knox, most in baseball since 2015. And here he is swinging at a pitch above the zone. Jim, do you cringe because you knew your zone so well and often stayed within it so that you could produce the best contact result? Uh, yeah, yeah, but you know, Scotty, I struck out. I struck out a lot, to be honest. And there were times that I would chase, and then I think went. There's a nice hit to right field. Yeah, that that's, boy. that's hard contact uh, past Polanco. Yeah, yeah. So, 
So, you know, I think I think you kind of go through the ups and downs, you know, where you'll get into chase mode. I mean, obviously, when this kid, when the ball's in the zone, he's going to he's gonna square it up. And he's a really, really good player. You know, it, it just it takes experience and time. I think the ceiling is so, so high for Rosario just because he's, you know, he loves having he loves having fun playing the game, and and it's nice to see uh, see how he attacks the baseball and 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 goes about it. Cleveland's best hitter today at the plate, Ahmed Rosario, a home run and a double in his two trips. He has scored both of the Cleveland runs, ten for Minnesota. And he fouls that one back. Give us another slugger who hits the baseball out of the zone and just doesn't care, JP. Well, Scott, here is another player who likes to swing the bat. Javier Baez. Check out these numbers for this season. 35 strikeouts, one walk. 35 strikeouts, one walk this year for Javier Baez, who, by the way, Scott, still ranks as an above average hitter by OPS plus. Wow, how about that? The slugging percentage for Javier Baez showing off what he can do. Andrelton Simmons makes the catch. That's out number one in the seventh. And let's pay off the pole. Most impressive season at age 40 since 1960. And the crowd going along with our choice, David Ortiz, 37% in 2016. See, I, I helped out Nolan Ryan there, I think, with his 1987 numbers. Led the NL and ERA, 276. Led baseball in strikeouts, 270. That was a pretty close race between Ryan and Ortiz for the best age 40 season. So now it's Josh Naylor. And Let's give you a little idea of what age 40 can do if you're one of the best in the world. There's Ryan, Winfield, Harold Baines over 399, Ricky Henderson, Randy Johnson, David Ortiz. I'm going to go off the board. Latroy Hawkins, a 293 ERA in a bit over 70 innings with the New York Mets, age 40 season in 2013. That's a foul ball. And Jim Tomey. 15 homers in 93 games, an 838 OPS on base plus slugging percentage back in 2011 at age 40, Jim. And you played for these two teams in 2011, both Cleveland and Minnesota. Yeah, yeah. I think, you know, when you get to be, and we talked earlier, when you get to be 40 years old and looking at the guys that had those great, great years, you really respect that because of what they did at that age. You know, I... I didn't play every day, but when I did play, you know, for the most part, I was successful and and had, you know, and just knew kind of my role at the age I was in, but also, you know, also kind of knew on those days off to help take care of my body and and how to approach playing for, you know, four to five days a week instead of seven. Josh Naylor to left field, and drifting over his Kirilov to make the catch. And there's the second out. And you can see Nelson Cruz just sticking to a routine. And he often will check out the tablet, look at some video in between at bats, which J.D. Martinez does so well and wanted video back, the access in the dugout, which has made the DH spot so valuable for the Red Sox. JP, what else can you add? How about this? Jamie Moyer, Scott, he won 105 games in the major leagues after his 40th birthday, 105 games. You could argue that his 40s were his best decade. In fact, Jamie Moyer's last game in the major leagues came at the age of 49. Latroy, you are younger than that, my friend. How's your right arm feeling these days? Uh, not so good. And I remember <laughs> watching Jamie Moyer and Kirby used to say he used to throw above the speed limit, uh, throw below the speed limit. Jamie Moore threw a below the speed limit, and he had absolute pinpoint control. It was unbelievable to watch him pitch and to see how success, successful he was. You know, when you see guys throwing 90-plus miles an hour, and then he comes in 
nowhere close to that and making hitters look very bad. Yu Chang hit hard to third. Donaldson, elite glove over there at the hot corner, puts him away. And the side is retired. Eddie Rosario led it off with a base hit. He's stranded. So after seven, the Twins 10, the Indians 2. Live on YouTube. Nelson Cruz agreeing to a deal with the Twins. Keep in mind, no player has hit more home runs in the last five years than Nelson Cruz. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention, please. Make way, make way for the new king. Nelson Cruz with a mammoth blast to center. Cruz hits a bomba. Nelson Cruz is four for four, another home run. The boomstick going to plenty tonight. Explode on the scene like a firebomb. Launched from a sire song over your whole team like a quiet storm. Until we touch down, then they wonder what now. Loud like the sound or the crowd when it's sold out. Leave the charge to so epic. Third deck and that's so gone. Are you kidding me? The legacy that we bring when that last bell rings, they will remember one thing. Number 400 for Nelson Cruz. Nelson Cruz with three homers tonight. Cruz dropping the boom. High fly to deep right center field. In the ninth, Nelson Cruz ends it. What an addition Nelson Cruz has been to this Minnesota team. Twins lead at 10-2. It's download the MLB app to get in-game video highlights, live pitch by pitch, breaking news, player updates, stat leaderboards, and more for your favorite team and the rest of the league. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Office of the Commissioner of Baseball and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form in the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without express written consent. It's a warm day again in Cleveland. The precipitation has held off. Thank you, Mother Nature. We appreciate it very much. And Phil Maton is in the game, 28-year-old is the fifth pitcher of the day for Cleveland. It was not Logan Allen's day. A few starts in a row now that have been rocky for the Cleveland left-hander. The Twins were all over him. Three home runs in the first, and they have not stopped. A six-homer day for Minnesota and Bomba squad. Alex Kirilov, the number nine hitter, the rookie, 23 years old. So listen carefully to this one. He started his regular season MLB career 0 for 15 until his first knock on Monday. His first big league hit came in the postseason. First player to do that. It was game two in the wild card round last year for Minnesota. The Twins knocked out in that opening round. But Kirilov getting some playoff experience, making his debut in the postseason before the regular season. Jim, can you imagine what the nerves were like <laughs> had to be had to be incredible you know it, it, it says a lot how the twins organization when what they think of this kid to put him out there in a situation in playoff atmosphere you know they have to be uh have to be very high on him and it's it's you know to do that it, it, you know i could only imagine the emotions that were going through this kid's head there it is, players to make a debut in the postseason. It's only been done three times, the latest from Kirilov. Adalberto Mondesi appearing in the 2015 World Series for KC. And Scott, Kirilov was the first player to start in a playoff, make his major league debut. Yeah, they just threw him right into the fire, LaTroy, as he bounces out. He's one for four today, but, I mean, this team is ready for the sweet left-handed swing. Line drive guy, uses all fields. Super quick hands. Rocco Baldelli and company excited to have Alex Kirilov hopefully in the lineup for many years to come. 
He's so even keel. His demeanor. Um, he's been around him for a few years now, probably about four years. I don't think I've ever seen him too high, too low. He's just straight across the board, and those are traits that you can't, you can't, you can't pay for. What about the traits that Byron Buxton has this afternoon? A five-hit day, handles the breaking stuff. It's his first career five-hit performance, all smiles this afternoon. Congrats on the milestone and many to come for young Byron Buxton, 27 years old, and his April has been fantastic. You know, this kid just, I mean, we talked earlier I mean, everything he does is so impressive, and you know, it's just, uh, it's, he's only gonna get better, Latroy. The, the sky's the limit, and it's gonna be, you know, the league is gonna know about this guy. I know they know about him now, but he's just gonna keep, keep soaring through, uh, through baseball. It's, it's fun to watch. First five hit game for a twin since CJ Crone did it in 2019 in the live chat YouTube creators team accounts I want to hear your best thoughts on Byron Buxton as a player and what he's done today Wow putting on a show Josh Donaldson with Buxton at second and that's back to the pitcher Bill Maton puts him away Nelson Cruz stepping up and he's been stepping up big with the microphone today too That was stolen base of that whole year. That will be the stolen base of the year. I got two infield hits, one triple, and they don't trust me yet. I got a stolen base there too. Let me free, man. <laughs> Veteran conversations going on with Nelson Cruz. He also has that trademark <laughs> phrase. Latre, after every home run, we've been hearing it. He's he's probably going to go viral with with his one-liner to his twin teammates. You know, and he's like that when he's not mic'd up. You can hear Nelson all over the field. He's always talking. He's always trying to get keep the guys hyped up, keep the energy going. He is not just sitting over there, you know, just minding his own business. He's making sure everybody's engaged, and he's keeping the guys laughing. He's been entertaining us today. And he's reached three times this afternoon. He turns 41 you know, we years old talk in about July. Buxton. We talk about Buxton. We talk about how many at-bats, Tommy, does a, a hitter need to start making those, those strides that, to reach his potential? And I've heard, you know, 1,500 to 2,000 at-bats that's when guys start to really figure it out. I mean, how many of bats do you think it is? You know, you know, I think I think that's about right. I'd go 1,200 to 1,500, and I would go, you know, two years. I think I think playing a full two full seasons in ba you know in the big leagues, I think you start to get comfortable. I think you still are making adjustments, but. You know, it, it, some guys it comes a little quicker. Some guys it takes a little longer. Like there's no, there's no timetable when somebody's going to reach their potential. But you look at all like with Buxton, you look the overall dynamic of his whole game. I mean, it, it's, you know, it's hard telling how much even better this guy's going to get. You know, and and baseball is going to notice very quickly because. You know, right now, right now, he's putting himself in that in that category where if he keeps it up, you're going to talk MVP. You know, I know it's April, but this is this is impressive to watch. He might earn himself Player of the Month. 438 batting clip so far this season. He leads baseball in slugging percentage. His five hits today, and Latroy 1,444 career at bat. So he's getting right around to that sweet spot that you were alluding to, Nelson Cruz with a slow roller, and he will be retired. So the eighth inning is clean for the Cleveland pitching side. The Twins, though, say that's all right. Six homers, 10 runs, have a day. Middle of the eighth.
What college did Tito attend? University of Arizona. How many teams did Tito play for? Four. How many home runs did Tito hit in his career? Uh, 21. What team did Tito manage before the Red Sox? Uh, Phillies. What college did Carl Willis attend? Uh, UNC Wilmington. How many teams did Carl play for? Three. What year did Sandy win Rookie of the Year? Uh, 92. What team traded Sandy to Cleveland? Padres. How many times was Sandy an All-Star? Six. How many years did Sandy play for Cleveland? Nine. Most home runs that Sandy hit in one season? 28. And Jose Ramirez stepping to the plate. The 2-0 is hit high! Deep to right! Down the line! Goal! What was the pitch in the last inning? You know, bro. Hard run pitch. <laughs> We're in the home eighth, Cleveland down by eight. And to see this trophy live on YouTube, it's coming up, the player of the game trophy. Yeah, I love the way that this was constructed. Somebody is going to be holding that. No, not you, Eddie. No, not you, Nelson. There are players that have done even more damage in today's game. The YouTube player of the game. So your choices today, Byron Buxton, Nelson Cruz, or Mitch Garver. Choose from one of these three Minnesota Twins. And I can see in the live chat, Secret Base said, Garver and Buxton are having good ones. But I'll take Cruz for player of the game purely from his dugout celebrations. Yeah, that's true. That can be a stat just for today, Latroy. Nelson Cruz, who maybe hasn't done as much slugging as Byron Buxton and Mitch Garver because what he's reached base three times a walk and a pair of singles but he's got to make this list because he's mic'd up for us today you know what Scott I'm gonna have to go out I'm going completely against the grain I'm gonna have to go with J.A. Happ just because you know he pitched a fantastic ball game gave his team an opportunity they did go out and score some runs but he is exactly what the doctor ordered for the twins today spoken like a true pitcher right jim <laughs> <laughs> no doubt for sure <laughs> what about you you make a choice for us help out everyone right now uh, who's I'm voting gonna, on I'm youtube go, I'm, I'm gonna i like i like the hits i'm gonna go buxton you know i anytime you get five hits that's you gotta be you gotta be the guy that day you know, it's 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 been an all around great game, you know, by really several of them. But Buxton stands out the most for me. Randy Dobnak puts away Austin Hedges. Byron Buxton was on the pregame show, so it would be awesome if we have him join us twice. He's fun to talk to. JP, Byron Buxton is just blossoming as a ball player, e even as a personality too. I remember when he first entered the league, he, he was quite shy. And now he, he is just a blast to talk to and to watch. Well, Scott, he is, and I loved to hear from our camera position at the ballpark, seeing his reaction when he arrived at second with that double, smiling, but also that little hint of frustration, saying, I wanted that to be a triple, and he was smiling the whole time. He's having so much fun on the field. He also certainly in the offseason, Scott, added some good weight, some strength. It's going to make him more durable, and uh, you alluded to it, Jim alluded to it a moment ago, the MVP discussion. Scott, I have been an MVP voter in the past. I will only say my notebook is out. I am uh, making some end of April thoughts uh, that I may refer to back in the later parts of September. I think Cleveland fans will enjoy the fact that you chose Jose Ramirez as your AL MVP last year, and you were an official voter, and then Shane Bieber was your third choice. Am I correct on that? Yes. Exactly. You know my ballot well. I went Ramirez 1, Abreu 2, Bieber 3. The pitcher as MVP is always a robust debate. I think in some cases you can vote a pitcher that high. 
Ramirez, for me, I've always loved his offense-defense combo. I thought that his defensive value was a little better than Abreu's, even though Abreu is an underrated first baseman. Um, certainly, there, there was no wrong answer, I believed. I was happy for Jose to win it. But I, I've been a big fan of Ramirez for a long time. And there was one year, in fact, Scott, when I boosted him up my MVP ballot because he had moved to second base to clear a path for Josh Donaldson to play third for Cleveland. A great teammate as well. Yeah, I like where your head's at. Jose Ramirez, Fran Mil Reyes, and this guy, Jordan Luplo, providing most of the offense so far this season for a Cleveland team checking in at 11 and 11. They've won three in a row. It looks like it'll be halted today unless they have a lot of late life in their bats. And Luplo has worked a full count. Here's our Google Pixel player spotlight. Jordan Luplo, drafted in 2014, acquired by Cleveland in 2018. And he enters the day with a 974 career OPS against left-handed hitters. That one to center, and Byron Buxton is there. But Luplo playing against righties and lefties this year. A walk-off home run on Monday. He's been great for Cleveland towards the top of the order. And it's 10-2, Twins after eight. from the fans here in Cleveland for hitting the scoreboard. This is unbelievable. Wow. Holy Double wow. He was the big man, the Big Mac in the late 90s. That's what you're talking about, Jim. On April 30th. Wow, what a blast off the bat of Mark McGuire. I, I, Scotty, I couldn't believe it that night when I seen it. It was, it, it, it it was just an incredible blast and you know to be there that night I mean you know you obviously don't want a guy doing it against you but it was something that over the years I had never seen a ball went that far he was popular back in the late 90s you had the the road crowd often <laughs> cheering for Mark McGuire just to see how far the baseball would go Jorge Polanco is the batter for Minnesota the cleanup hitter today four five and six do up in this top of the ninth twins with six home runs this afternoon looking to snap a four game losing skid two and 13 in their last 15 and going big this afternoon twenty four year old left hander Kyle Nelson is making his season debut today and that's pulled left side and there's your first out. Rocco Baldelli, a little younger than Terry Francona. So much so that Baldelli actually 
played for Terry Francona in his one season with Boston. Baldelli's already managing in his third year with Minnesota. He's still the youngest manager in Major League Baseball. Both Francona and Baldelli have won Manager of the Year in the past. Baldelli was the youngest to do it, and obviously this is a great stat. Baldelli's younger than Nelson Cruz, Latroy. Yeah, <laughs> Nelson's older than our manager. Um, you know what? It's just... I, I, I actually enjoy the fact that we have such a young manager and you have a player on the team that's older than the manager. Like, does he can, you know, can concede to the veteran <laughs> or not? <laughs> Garver flies out to right. So you're saying, Latroy, if there's, you know, a situation where they're like, I don't know, I can't remember. I, I got to think back to whatever, the, the 80s. Nelson Cruz can be like, well, hold on, Rocco, I can do this a little bit better than you. I've got a year on you. X Nelson. <laughs> <laughs> Brent Rooker with two outs here in the ninth. All right, Jim, so now what for Minnesota? How do they build off this? Because this team has been in the national conversation over the past week just based on the fact that they have underperformed so far this season. Cleveland putting together about a 500 record. Obviously, they'll drop a game below if they fall today. But for Minnesota, how do you keep this momentum going, especially when you have a day off tomorrow? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, after a day like today, you really would like to play. But anytime. You can get a day off. I think overall it helps your ball club. The big, the big thing is, you know, is just tra just stay consistent with your routine, and and look, we know the weather is going to start getting better here, and and Latroy, you know this. It's all about pitching. You know, if you get if you get good starting pitching, and your bullpen, your bullpen starts pitching well, as you know, also. Like, you know, you just, it's a long grind. You know, this is, we talk about April, but also, you know, there's a there's a lot of season left. And you just, uh, more than anything, my, for me, it's just being really consistent with your routine and playing it out with, with the good veterans that they have to keep these young guys focused. Right, staying consistent and taking it one day at a time. You know, you're what, seven games under 500 right now. Don't try to win seven games in one game. It doesn't work that way. Yeah, and they'll have Face a seven-game homestand. Get some of the guys off up. the DL. Get them back. Bottom of the ninth, the last licks for Cleveland. Down eight. They've got big work to do. Say hey. Como estás? You gotta say it in English. Hello, how you doing? All right. Hey. Bueno. Hello. Hey, I take back that bet too, because we ain't make a bet. Kept hit that car, bro. It's a little too easy. It's a little too easy for y'all. It's a little too easy for y'all. Bro, on top of the on top. Look how smooth this is. Y'all got to watch how smooth this is. Oh, wow. Way back. Dog, Kenta got a better swing than I did. Hey. <laughs> wow. Sheesh. Way better than me. Oh, yeah. Why BP at uh, 15? Am I taking it? No. No. I'm locked oh, in, bro. Oh, it's time to go. If you want to see more exclusive Cleveland Indians content, subscribe to their YouTube page at youtube.com 
slash Cleveland Indians. Hit up their channel and subscribe. YouTube.com slash Cleveland Indians, Cleveland, Ohio. That's the spot for our third YouTube game of the year. And then we roll into May. Four lined up exclusively right here. MLB, or excuse me, YouTube.com slash MLB. Braves Nationals is next on May 6th. We'll give you much more on that one in the post-game show. 30 minutes dedicated to the Twins and the Indians coming up right after this one. Jake Bowers is going to lead off the last of the ninth for Cleveland. Bowers came into the game in the last half inning at first base, moving Yu Chang over to third and sitting down Jose Ramirez for the rest of the day. And Randy Dobnak back to work. Bowers sends it to center, and it falls for a base hit to start off the bottom of the ninth. Brian Mill Reyes up next. Hitless today, two strikeouts, and flew out to center back in the fourth. Also, props to the YouTube creators, the team accounts, everyone hanging out with us in the live chat this afternoon. I can see some of your questions that have come in throughout the day that didn't get answered. We'll try to address a few of them in the post-game show. Talking about, I like this one from MLB, maybe we'll get to later. Is Nelson Cruz going to play until he's 45, the MLB YouTube channel, trying to put an age range on Nelson Cruz and a shelf life really for his career because he just has shown no signs of slowing down. In fact, kind of feel like things have been speeding up for him over the past few years. Wiser knows his zone so well. That is just off the plate to Fran Mill Reyes. What did you learn, Jim, later in your career that you wish you knew early on? I would say for me, when to sit on breaking balls and how to do it, where I didn't feel rushed to them. Early on, I obviously, you know, like you, you hunt the fastball. But then you learn over time, okay, this guy's like flipping me first pitch curveballs or, you know, in hitters counts, he's throwing a change up. I learned how to slow down and and get to the breaking stuff better than I did when I was when I was a lot younger. I like that. Latroy, what late learning did you do? I think uh, just being comfortable in uncomfortable situations and you know just understanding my breathing and relaxing and saying to myself like I've been here before get out of it. I've been here before, get out of it. And you learn, you end up learning, you know, what you need to do to be successful, you know, seven, eight, ten out of ten times. You're not going to be successful every time. It's baseball. But understanding, you know, your body, what your strengths are, what your weaknesses are, and being uncomfortable in, 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 being comfortable in uncomfortable situations for me. Fran Mill Reyes swings and misses. One out in the ninth. Latroy, what was that last pitch? Looks like his two seamer. Dominic throws a very heavy sinker. Yes. Look nasty. Change up. Look at it. Wow. So that was his change up. He doesn't throw a lot of change ups. He came into spring training looking for more horizontal movement on his slider. And he worked very hard at it, and he's developed a, a pretty good slider to go with his two-seam fastball. He has something running away to righties and running into righties. But that changeup, that's a, I mean, that's an equalizer right there. Yeah, yeah, that was that had a nice hump on it. Uh, looked like a good pitch. 26-year-old, he's crafty. Randy Dobnak, his sinker has one of the best vertical drops in Major League Baseball. So yeah, I mean. You could be fooled for the sinker. That's a foul ball. Uh, it's a great story, too. First player to come out of the United Shore Pro Baseball League, which is in the greater Detroit area. He played for the Utica Unicorns 
undrafted out of college as well back in 2017. And look at him go. Make it from independent ball to the major leagues, now on a long-term contract with the Minnesota Twins. It goes without saying, he's put in a lot of work with uh, pitching coach Wes Johnson, the bullpen coach Pete Mackey to get to this point. It's always great to see someone work so hard and then get rewarded and uh, all the hard work they do pays off for them and their family. You know, it's, it's great to see. Yeah, Dobnak signed through 2025 with the Twins. Some club options as well that could keep him with the team until 2028. He agreed to an extension back in spring training. I think it was a, it was a great deal for Dobnak and his family and a great deal for the you know, Minnesota Twins organization. He's got the specs. Got the Fu Manchu, he's got it going. Eddie Rosario single last sinker time baller up. like Dobnik is. When you're a sinker baller like Dobnik, you know when your stuff is good because you got the guys hitting the ball on the ground. When they start hitting fly balls off of you. That's a that's an area of concern for a sinker baller. And he gets Rosario to chase. Strikeout number two for Dobnak, who uses that sinker about 50% of the time. Changeup. Only goes to that changeup 8% of the time. He's been picking it up, using it more as a weapon this afternoon. JP. How about Randy Dobnak? One of the best stories in the league. He has been, Scott, for a very, very long time. Again, you mentioned his, his roots playing independent baseball uh, in my home state of Michigan. And also just wanted to mention, Scott, as well, we see the patch on Randy's right arm in honor of uh, the late Twins bench coach, Mike Bell, one of the great baseball families. And certainly, I know Jim and Latroy, we all, all, all of us around the game, we know the Bells well, and just uh, they remain in our hearts and our thoughts here today. 46 years old, Mike Bell passes away from cancer. You're right, comes from just such a great baseball family. And his brother Mike, of course, the manager of the Cincinnati Reds. And we miss him. We like to call that baseball royalty. That's right. Had a chance to, I was with the big league team last year during an abbreviated season. I had a chance to spend a lot of time with Mike. Uh, we got there July 2nd until the, you know, we lost in the playoffs. And just being around them every day and you know, talking about families and baseball, he's definitely going to be, he's going to be missed. Baseball lifer. Yes, he, would, he will. He would love to see what the Twins were doing today. Rocco Baldelli pleased to see his club back on track. Cleveland took the first two in this series. First series of the season between the Indians and the Twins, and this should do it. Out at second, Donaldson goes the short way. Game over. The Twins top the Indians by a final score of 10-2 off six home runs this afternoon. Two of them from Mitch Garver. Byron Buxton had a five-hit day. Nelson Cruz reached base three times and was helping us out, hooking us up with a little audio on the field. Your YouTube player of the game results coming up in just a moment. And let's start the post-game show. We're about to chat with one of the Minnesota Twins in a moment. The MLB Game of the Week post-game show is presented by Google Pixel. Hugs and high fives and smiles and 
smooth celebrations from the Minnesota Twins today, who improved to 8 and 15 on this young season. With a W, they were up big from the jump. Three home runs in the first. That was half of their total for the day in terms of long balls. 10-2 is your final score. We're with you for 30 minutes. Scott Braun, Jim Tomey, Latroy Hawkins, and J.P. Morosi, and we will have our YouTube player of the game, the trophy, the player on the field. We'll talk to him, have a nice lengthy conversation in just a moment, but let's start with the bats, Jim, because they came out and they bashed. This team was known as Bomba Squad back in 2019, and I think for the first time this season, they really showed us what they were all about back in 2019 when they set the Major League home run record. What do you think? For sure, for sure. I mean, from from at bat number one, you know, it started. They were aggressive. They uh, they had this mentality today that they were going to attack the strike zone, and it and it showed all day long. The weather. We talked about the weather. The weather has been getting a little warmer, so guys are getting comfortable. And you know, it was for the Minnesota Twins all around today was a great day. It's for them. It's a great uh, building block. Now going into uh, in, they have an off day tomorrow and then see where they head from here. But this, for them, it was a nice day. I know what Latroy Hawkins would say. Don't sleep on Jay Happ putting together another fine performance this afternoon. Yes, Jay Happ, he went out there and did exactly what we needed him to do to, um, to get this team in the right direction. Um, okay, you know, Jay, he, he threw the ball over the plate. He definitely had some counts where he was 2-0, but he was able to make quality pitches in those account in that, those counts. And he just went out there and just calmed the entire team down with his demeanor on the mound. Seven innings, four hits, two runs. Gave up a home run on 0-2 pitch. Make mistakes, big league hitters, hitters are going to make you pay for those. But all in all, he had a great day. And when I he's my player of the game. I know Buxton had five, five hits. But we needed J.A. Happ to go out there and give – the Twins this, the much-needed pitching performance that they've been longing for. And Hap's ERA is under two on the season, 1-9-6. Great signing in the offseason by Minnesota to kind of fill that crafty lefty veteran role that Rich Hill provided for the Twins last year. So that's your pick. I'm going with Byron Buxton, the YouTube player of the game, holding the trophy and joining us live <laughs> worldwide right now. I mean, five hits, <laughs> first career five-hit day. And he joined us on the pregame show. You're the man. Byron, thanks for joining us. How's the trophy, and how was your day? Pretty heavy, um, <laughs> but it was, it was good. You know, obviously, we started the game off pretty good. Um, you know, we attacked the zone. Pitching-wise with Jay Happ, he came out here and does what he does. And, you know, the bats came alive tonight. And, uh, you know, it's just one of those things where – we just kept the line moving, pushed it down to the next guy, and uh, we had a lot of fun today. So, you know, it's just one of those things to look at as that, that turnaround spot. You know, when fans are watching and your team had a pretty sizable lead throughout the afternoon, Byron, we start to think this is a player capable of contributing a triple. Are we thinking cycle? Did you have that on your mind at all later <laughs> in the game once it was kind of out of hand and you were putting together a big day? Um... Honestly, the only only a bet I thought about the triple was my last one, and uh, um, it was just one of those where I kind of know know Rosie and left a little bit, so it would, it, it would have been more of a game for me to go to third just then. So, you know, it's just me about stand stand within myself, stand in my approach, and uh, you know, it it is what it is. But overall, you know, today was a good day for not only me but everybody. Byron, Jim told me congratulations on a great day. You know, your first at bat, you shot the ball to right field for the home run. I remember, like, when I would hit a ball the other way, it kind of set the day, you know, to have good at bats all day. Did you feel the same way? Um, I did, you know. Uh, just went up there and didn't try to do too much. Uh, you know, just try to have quality and consistent at bats. That's, that's something that, uh, you know, we kind of talked about a little bit in Clubhouse and, Today, it, uh, it carried over to, to what we wanted to do. So, like I said, we had a lot of fun today, and uh, this, this right here is definitely, definitely a turning point to where we want to get to. Buck Daddy, how you doing? I'm good. What up? This is Latroy. 
Oh, I know that, so, boy. So, congrats on a five-hood game, big dog. Congrats on your five-hood game. Appreciate it. You know, how have you been able to resist swinging at those 0-2 sliders in early in the count like you have in the past? What has been your thought process up to the plate? Um, you know, er, I'm not not the hitter that's gonna gonna go up there and try to walk. So, you know, early that last at bat, second to last at bat, you know, he threw me a good slaughter. I swung at the my first first pitch. So it was one of those things where, you know, I kinda gotta look at the movement, the tilt of where it started and that's something I'm getting a little bit better at is you know, trying to get rid of the, that pitch and, and move on to the next one. So it's all about pitch to pitch for me right now and uh, making adjustments pitch by pitch. And, uh, you know, that slider in the dirt, it's just one of those where I know in the past it's, it's been a pitch that struggled me. So it's, it's all about me seeing the ball up. And I know if I see the ball up, I can put a good swing on anything. Hey, Byron, I know you'd appreciate this. I think this was the line of the day. Terry Francona is just such a fun personality, and we were talking to him about you and your performance from yesterday as, as you came back from some uh, patella tendinitis, and Tito told us this morning, if that's tendinitis, I want it because he looks good. So <laughs> I, what do you think of Tito's remark, and how are you, how are you feeling knee-wise? Um, no, obviously Tito is uh, – very special manager. Uh, a lot of respect for him over there, especially been in the game as long as he is. And, you know, the past few years hasn't been the way that he wanted to go, but he's been battling and he's still out here. And uh, it's, it's a blessing just to be able to look across the dugout and see him over there sitting and, and, and watching the game. And, uh, you know, for me, it's just coming out here and, you know, not, like I said, not doing too much. Everybody knows what they can do and, and stand within themselves. So just got to keep coming out here playing Twins baseball. Congrats on the W and on the trophy. Take that home with you. The YouTube player of the game. Buck, thanks for joining us, and good luck. We'll talk soon, okay? Thank you. You got it. Byron Buxton. I mean, he ran away with this thing. And when you have a five-hit day, you're leading the league in slugging percentage. You're hitting well over 400 after the first month of the season. You earned it. The YouTube player of the game, he's got the trophy. He's got all of the tools. The exit velocity off the bat, the elite speed, the glove that is among the best in Major League Baseball. Twins 10, Indians 2, it's a final. We still have so much more to cover with you on the post-game show presented by Google Pixel. He just smokes it. Was crushed. And this is going to do it. Oh, oh my. Strike three. That was a great play. I talked about his fielding skills. That was remarkable. This is the MLB Game of the Week live on YouTube postgame show presented by Google Pixel. The Twins all over the Cleveland Indians this afternoon. If you're hungry for home runs, we're about to feed you. Watch what happened today between these two teams. Byron Buxton's going to lead the way for Minnesota, tied for the most home runs in the American League with seven. And he's going to go the other way. Josh Naylor fading back, and it's gone! Second pitch of the game, Byron Buxton muscles up. It's his eighth home run of the season, and the Twins grab a 1-0 lead. 
It's easy power, Jim Tony. Boy, this guy's this guy is on a roll. I mean, you know, that ball actually got a little bit deep on him. Third career leadoff home run for Buxton, and that brings us to Donaldson, who's recorded 11 hits this season. Donaldson, he's just he's on 100 all day long. Like his energy level is so high in the clubhouse. And Donaldson clocks that one to deep left. Forget about it. The Twins go back to back to start the game. Josh Donaldson records his second home run of the season, and it's 2-0 Minnesota. They're not messing around here, Scotty. They are coming out ready to hit, and, uh, you know, this is a really, really good offense. The Twins' second baseman back in the lineup after a day off yesterday. He's won for his last 12. Talk about energy and what he does up the middle, and. You know, he's just a dynamic type player that can get the Twins. There you go. He tees off, and Jorge Polanco makes it three home runs in the first for the Twins. A burst of energy from this Twins offense. It's four zip. Talk about pitchers having to pitch ahead in the count and stay out of hitters counts. That 3-0, 3-1, 2-1 counts. And when you put yourself in that situation, you give it Hitter is an opportunity to do some damage like Polanco on this 3-1 fastball. And that loads him up for Nelson Cruz who has a grand slam this year. That came early in Detroit. It's Nelson Cruz loud contact to right field and it's off the top of the wall. That's going to score a couple for Minnesota. Nelson Cruz contributing the two run single. It's six nothing Minnesota. Almost left the yard would have been his 11th career grand slam. Nelson Cruz pounded that baseball to right. Buxton scores along with Kirilov. That is really neat. There's Rosario going the other way, and it's gone. Ahmed Rosario on an 0-2 pitch has teed off, and the Indians are on the board. Rosario's second home run of the season comes off half. Cleveland breaks the ice. Another beautiful swing, fellas. That ball must be uh, must be going out to right field. And Williams Astudio is coming up. Astudio pulls that one down the line, and it's gone. La Tortuga goes long. It's the fourth home run of the day for the Twins. We're only in the third. Astudio's second of the season. Make it 7-1 Minnesota. Beautiful swing, Scotty. Breaking ball here and stayed right on it. And again, you know, what a nice level, beautiful swing. <laughs> what a Tortuga. Mitch Garver blasts that baseball and it is gone. Wow. Wow. <laughs> on cue. I can't wait to hear what Nelson Cruz said on that one. You can see him celebrating again in the dugout. Garver after two strikeouts this time blasts off for his third of the season. So breaking ball breaking down and in the Garver was able to get the barrel to that ball and hit it off the facing. Garver has definitely worked very hard. Worked very hard at you know, being a better catcher framing his presentation has gotten way better and him calling the game has gotten better also. And him blasting home runs looks really good today. Mitch Garver circa 2019. There he goes again. It's a two home run performance doubling his total on the season to four. And the Twins have a double digit run. Garver is very good against left hand pitching. He's been outstanding today against him. Hopefully this starts a trend. Yeah, what a day for the Twins bats. And then Randy Dobnak finish this up for us a couple innings in relief Donaldson going a second and that's a W to snap a four game losing skid the twins up to 8 and 15 on the season and Cleveland drops to 11 and 12 on the year Rosario with the home run on the Cleveland side he scored both runs but it was all twins today six long balls it just gets you thinking back to what they're capable of doing at the plate 2019 set the record in the major leagues for most home runs in a season and just look at all the power that they can provide today the shortest distance on a homer was buxton in the first and the longest belongs to jorge polanco 426 feet 
earlier. Mitch Garver with 413, 407 on his two homers. So look at the last five games for Minnesota. They double their home run output from the previous four just in today's game alone. And they almost matched the run scoring as well. Seven barrels, that's just ultimate contact off the bat in terms of exit velocity and launch angle. Minnesota, I think you could say Latroy needed a day like this and they needed one fast because the AL Central looks like it's going to be quite competitive this year with a surprising Kansas City Royals ball club a super talented Chicago White Sox squad, and Cleveland can pitch, too. Well, you, the Twins definitely needed this. They had the recipe today that you need to be successful, and with that being said, they had great starting pitching. Jay Happ gave them seven-plus innings, or well, seven innings on four-hit baseball, and the hitters came out. The offense was exploding from the first at bat, first bat batter all the way until, you know, about the eighth inning, I think that's when they scored their last run, and they caught the ball. They hadn't done any of those three at the same time this season. And when you do all three at the same time, you're going to have good results. And that's 10-2 victory over Cleveland today. This is what we were expecting from this team, more of this, Jim. And the bullpen's been a problem. This wasn't a high leverage spot for them today. And Randy Dobnak looked good late in the game. But Jay Happ, nice signing in the offseason, getting the job done, providing some consistent, solid innings of work, yet again going 7-plus for back-to-back -back starts. And then the power that we expected, it, was, it wasn't it was all there besides really what Buxton and Nelson Cruz to start the year. You see someone like Mitch Garber get involved. That's a big sign for them. Well, as LaTroy said, yeah. Hap, Hap coming off the one hitter really, really pitched well. And uh, then the offense exploded. They were They were ready to hit from really pitch one. And the warm weather, we spoke on that, all of us, that – that kind of was a topic of the day, and this is contagious. You know, when you can have good at bats like this, and you get good, and you get good starting pitching, you know, you can go on good runs. So we'll see here moving forward where they go. I'm jealous of J.P. Morosi. He's at the park today. First off, weather held up, which was great, and also he he got to watch a show. I mean, there were some loud, far home run balls from the Minnesota Twins bats this afternoon. JP, what did it look like in person in Cleveland, Ohio? Well, thanks, Scott. First of all, an honor to work with you, LaTroy and Jim, this afternoon. And you're right. I was grateful to watch one of the best shows going in the sports world. That's Byron Buxton playing baseball. It was one wow moment after another from the second pitch of the game onward. Brilliant, graceful defending in center field as well. The only surprise was that he didn't complete the cycle. That was probably the one last thing that he was trying to do today. Five hits the first time in his career, and I'm going to go out on a limb and say, Scott, probably not the last time he'll be able to do that because he's been brilliant so far, tremendous to watch him play baseball this season. And certainly after a game like this, you wonder what did we see here today that applies to the future. And I think for the Twins, it was the quality at-bats for Mitch Garver. Yes, Cruz has been almost consistent doing everything he does uh, year after year, so that's not really a surprise. And Buxton's been a revelation this month. I'm making notes as we speak in my MVP uh, notebook there for the month of September as we look ahead to the future. But I think Garver's at-bats to me really stood out. Hap's consistency stood out to get the rest for the bullpen for the Twins ahead of what's going to be a very competitive weekend. They've got to face the first place Kansas City Royals back at Target Field. Tough assignments there. Brady Singer and Danny Duffy, who's been arguably the best starting pitcher in the American League this season. He is their assignment on Saturday. So very much a needed win for the Twins here in Cleveland this afternoon. Now for the home team, one trend to watch, Scott, that I've been following the last couple of years, really, the lack of outfield production. We can certainly say for the Indians, Logan Allen, an abbreviated start, made it hard for them to win. But combine the outfield, one for ten by the outfielders. The Cleveland outfield, the last three years, ranks fourth from the bottom of the American League in terms of OPS from those outfielders. So I think overall, Scott, that has to get better for this team and for Jose Ramirez and Fran Mil Reyes to have the support. Of course, Luplo has been very good this week. He needs some more company there to produce in the outfield. Fortunately for them, yeah, a tough assignment this weekend against the White Sox, but they've got Shane Bieber, the reigning Cy Young Award winner, on the mound for them in the series opener on Friday. One more bit of American League news uh, to keep you apprised of, Scott. George Springer 
expected to make his Blue Jays debut tonight against the Nationals. So it's been one injury after another. He had the, the oblique injury, then the quad injury. But right now, all things checking out. George Springer back in the lineup. He saw Vlad Jr. hit three homers yesterday, Scott. He wants some of his own here in his Blue Jays debut this evening. More to come here as we have our MLB on YouTube action live. The post-game coverage continues after this. Today's the day, man. We are here, ready to go. Excited. Opener at Target Field. Be ready, guys. Be good. Let's do this. Dímelo. Tranquilo. Dímelo. As you see guys, we are here, ready to go, so excited to, to see you guys out, out there. Ten runs, 13 hits, six homers for the Minnesota Twins to salvage a game in this three-game set against one of their AL Central rivals in Cleveland. And even though Byron Buxton was the YouTube player of the game, he gets the trophy, Nelson Cruz still has a special place in our hearts because he was mic'd up and he provided some of this. I, I know something that you don't know. I know. I, I got the mic. I'm going to tell you. Yes, uh, yeah. What about you? Right here. you yeah, I mean, I weigh older than that. you, and you have more gray hair than I. No. Yes, you have. No, no, no. Yes, you have. No, no, no. Is no. that your real age? What are you from? You from Dominican? <laughs> <laughs> send them, send them, send them, send them! Send them, send them, send them! Send them! Eddie, I'm going, man. Okay. Tell everybody. That was stole base of the whole year. That will be the stole base of the year. I got two infield hits, one triple, and they don't trust me yet. I got a stole base there too. Let me free, man. Polanco, what the hell, Polanco? What are you doing? I was almost on second base when he swung. Hmm? Yeah! You got two RBIs back at the second base. Oh, he's safer, 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 safer. Yahoo! On you! Face! What a tortuga! Hey, security! Take him out! Concentration the game, bro. They didn't kick him out. Good news. <laughs> Nelson Cruz is so. It's like he is enjoying the game every day as much as anybody at the ballpark and wants to play forever, and it seems like he can. Top three hitters in the lineup today for the Twins. Eight for 13, four extra base hits. They drove in four, they scored four. That's Buxton, Donaldson, and Cruz, three of the best in Major League Baseball. <sighs> See, that's why I love hearing players mic'd up during a game because Nelson Cruz, I mean, he is so entertaining. I, I love more and more of that, just the natural, organic conversations that are going on. He's talking to everybody. He's putting on a show. And Jim, we might have to have free Nelson Cruz shirts because apparently he wants to steal a base or two. He tripled yesterday, and he wants the green light. <laughs> he does. He does. You know, he... 
he definitely he wants to show off his speed. I know I know this watching him and listening to him all day. What great energy! It reminds me of Carlos Baerga, who I played with in Cleveland. When guys like that bring the energy of an excitement level, vocally speaking, you know it rubs off, and uh, it's there's no uh, no wonder why he's their team leader. You can see that listening to him today. 76 career stolen bases, by the way, for Nelson Cruz. So he didn't mention that, or at least we didn't hear him, but he should. If he wants to get involved, Latroy, he should go 76. Google it, okay? <laughs> Did you guys hear, hear how heavy he was breathing on the base pads? <laughs> I guarantee he doesn't breathe that heavy when he's taking those thousand swings in the cage. <laughs> but you know what? I, You know, only teammate I can – even compare him to with his energy that he brings every day is probably Kirby Puckett. Kirby brought that type of energy every day, even in the clubhouse. He was the you heard Kirby before you saw him. He was just that loud and he was pumping everybody up. He had pumping energy. I mean, if you needed a, a, a hype man, Kirby Puckett was the hype man for us. <laughs> You know, today also we received audio from the great Shane Bieber, and pitchers can chat too, especially on a day when they're not pitching. Right, Shane? I don't know what the exit velo is on that, but... Come up. Let's go, kid. You don't really expect that ball to leave the yard. So you're going to laugh, but that's what I was going to do if I hit one in Cincinnati. No. <laughs> <laughs> Wave it fair. <laughs> it's dead center, and I'm waving it fair. <laughs> On the outskirts of like Hong Kong, where there's there's a like a full-time paid job of a, a a human being to pollinate, self-pollinate flowers, because there's such a shortage of bees. Did you go to college for that? I did go to college for that. Oh well, <laughs> no, that's where I learned it. it was in college. You're saying like, like do you have to have a degree for if a righty's up? I'll put it in my glove like that for curveball, slider, or heater. If I throw a change up, then I'll somehow get to it, but I don't do that. If a lefty's up, I'll go uh, kind of similar. Curveball, change up, heater. Hey, Latroy, Zach Plesak's pretty smart for sitting next to Shane Bieber, the Cy Young winner in the American League last year, who's going to help this Cleveland team stay competitive in the American League Central, which involves really at least you could say four contenders with the Royals, the White Sox, Cleveland, Minnesota. You think they're going to think uh, pick things back up. And, you know, the Tigers still in a bit of a build back up to contention. But look at Zach Plesak just soaking it all in from learning about what the, the pollination knowledge also to the pitch grips, which I think he can wow. apply a little bit more to his own career. Yeah, I mean, just yeah, it's great. It's great to see one. these young guys he, talk. Great. <laughs> Go ahead, Latroy. Go ahead, yeah, Jim. it's great to see these young guys. Okay, it's I'll take it's it. great <laughs> to see these young guys talking the game, learning the game, you know, and communicating. Latroy, you know, when we were on the bench, we definitely, uh, definitely, kind of watched and talked the game, and it's just fun to see that. It's great to see Bieber, who's a big competitor on the mound, show his personality to all the fans out there that 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 follow him, and you know, and just just kind of follow what kind of a great player he is it's pretty cool I really enjoyed the the amount of useless information about the pollination <laughs> that was awesome for me <laughs> but you know what when you have a guy like Bieber on your team and he's doing something right and if he's willing to share that knowledge with the guys around him I mean it's like a teacher when the teacher's teaching the pupils should be paying attention. And as you can see, Plesek was definitely paying, paying attention. Yeah, and if you do happen to have a friend who is a beekeeper, then we also helped you out today on YouTube. That's what we do. We will be back all May long with a game of the week. That's the Braves and the Nationals next week, 4 o'clock Eastern for that first pitch. Two teams in a very competitive division in the National League East. And three more to go after that just in the month of May. Many more the rest of the season. The MLB Game of the Week live on YouTube presented by Google Pixel. 
That's a wrap here from all over the country, as you can see. Great job by LaTroy and the Hall of Famer Jim Tomey, the great JP Morosi, our entire superstar crew. Twins win big, six homers, 10 runs. I'm Scott Braun logging out for now. See you next time. See you next week on YouTube.